More Dump. Hello and welcome to Lore Dump, the show where I take a friend of mine who hasn't experienced a particular game or franchise and walk them through the full story. Uh, I've been thinking about Metal Gear Solid and Hideo Kojima a lot recently with the release of Death Stranding Director's Cut on the horizon and rumours that Konami are going to remake and probably mess up Metal Gear Solid 1. Uh, so to get snakes and foxes and one-armed pensioners out of my head, I invited my friend Chase to return to the microphone and let me explain the Metal Gear Solid lore to him. Uh, we did this for Resident Evil a couple of months ago, um, had a blast doing it, and a couple of people have asked for another, so here you go. I'm somehow more scared for this one than I am, or was, for Resident Evil, and I was quite frightened for that one going in, and then this one, hearing you message me as you were writing the script has put nightmares in my brain leading up to today, so Legit. this is going to be fun. <laughs> I have been dreaming about this, um, and I'm excited and terrified because there's just so much... And you think you have a handle on it, and it all makes sense when you play it, but then review, re like, there's so many different videos and wikis and, and all this bullshit online, and people have conflicting theories on what things mean and how they tie together, and it's like... I don't uh, like the fact that there is ever even a what things mean, that it's not black and white cut and dry. Yeah, it's all a bit... But you, yeah, it's it's easily one of my favorite franchises. Um, I I yeah, I absolutely love it. I play pretty much all the games like in a week. But um, so what do you know about Metal Gear Solid so far? I know that Snake likes to hide in some boxes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh I know those weird video calls with the general. Great. And I know the entirety of Metal Gear Awesome. <laughs> Just all the all the memes. <laughs> all cool. the memes, and that's about it. Um, I you I hate I hate stealth games generally, so I've never played them. Fair, that's um, understandable. I, they're too slow. I can't. I don't have the patience. My ADHD brain goes. Brrr. So fun fact for you. Um, I played. I've played them all like completely stealthily. Um, one of the things that Metal Gear Solid gets a little bit of flack for by people who haven't played them, um, is that they think that it's all hyper militarization and fetishization of violence, whereas. In fact, the entire series has a very particular theme, and that is, you know, killing is bad, war sucks, look at what it does to people, isn't this fucking shit. And when I'm describing all the silliness to you, I want to remind you that at numerous points through every single game, uh, characters like the main character, Solid Snake, will have very deep philosophical conversations with people <laughs> about, like, the, the tragedy of war. Oh, and, no. Yeah, it's, it's great. Oh, I mean, um, I'm very excited because... Fuck the military, but also, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, similarly to Resident Evil, uh, Metal Gear Solid is batshit insane. It has 23 Fantastic. games in its entirety. Uh, some Why? Of which... Why? Yeah. Why? Too Why? many. Um, has the cash cow not been milked? Well, mm, we're going to talk about that. The udders, <laughs> the udders are chafing. The cow wants to die. Yep. Um, I, however, yeah, that's including remakes um, and, and, and reboots, uh, but to keep things simple and so that we don't lose our collective minds, uh, I'm going to just focus on the mainline entries, sort of. Um, <laughs> sort of. This is going to be just like Resi, just sort of. Pretty much. Um, so I'm going to go through, in order, nine games. Metal okay, Gear sure. 1, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. I straight up thought that Metal Gear Solid mm -hmm. was just, like, a remake of the first two games. No. Nope. I didn't realize that Metal Gear was a prequel, question mark? No, no, no. Or it's, uh, just, a, yeah, the, the beginning. It was the, the very be start. The beginning. Yeah. Prequel's the wrong word, but you, same mm -hmm. concept. Why? Yeah. Um, and they're, they're important, too. Why, after two games, did you just rename the whole franchise and then just run with that for the whole rest of it? Oh, mate, we're not even doing Metal Gear Rising Revengeance in this, which is its own That's thing. That's such a so. good name, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so so we're doing Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. There are technically two Metal Gear Solid 5s. Um, we oh, will... fuck. I remember that being a whole thing when it came out. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Oh, also, no. Towards the end, um, I'm also going to chuck in a bit of meta chat about PT, Hideo Kojima's departure from Konami. Um, I've basically done a big chunk of and research. And the pachinko machines. And the pachinko machines. <laughs> um, I now have been able to develop um, a 
theoretical, because still nobody knows for certain what happened, a uh, theoretical timeline of what happened, and it's fucked. And it's really, it's arguably more interesting than Metal Gear Solid itself. <laughs> okay. Um, Why not? I'm still, this is another thing, going in, and I had this conversation with you before, is that I am not fully convinced, right, that Hideo Kojima is a real human being. <laughs> I'm convinced that they are either a conglomerate of evil people, or a, a rogue AI okay. set out to just fuck with my day yeah. mine specifically they're coming from me it's really interesting <laughs> that you think that Hideo Kojima is a conglomerate of evil rogue AI because that's um, important <laughs> oh fantastic I've, I've already sussed out the plot yeah um, so I want to be really really clear on this uh, the Metal Gear Solid lore is fascinating and insane and it is very convoluted um, I am my not my favourite kind yeah j- just like with Resident Evil I'm not an expert uh, please do not take everything I say as gospel corrections in the comment section are absolutely appreciated uh, especially when it comes to to Metal Gear Solid 2 because my god um, I still don't think I fully understand what happens at the end of that game um, and looking at videos and wikis online it looks like <laughs> Hideo Kojima doesn't understand what happens at the end of that game oh, so, oh no yeah um, oh no it's a, it's a series which is very dear to my heart uh, I jumped into it for the first time in 2013 and absolutely devoured the first few games in the space of two weeks um, this might need to be a two-parter because there is so much to discuss so yeah so you ready? No. Okay, we begin with... God damn it. Metal Gear. That doesn't look like... Is that Snake? That yes. doesn't look like Snake at all. He's so young. That is Snake. Yep, He's that is Snake. Uh, the, yeah, kind the art- of hot, but also in that like action movie tries to make the guy too hot, and then just... Yeah. No. Um, I think like I've got a couple... Hot. I've got a couple of pictures of him in game coming up, I think, and he does not look like he does later at all. Um, But he is, this is Solid Snake, right? So both Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 originally released on MSX consoles and then were later ported to the NES. Um, I'm I'm not going to spend too long on Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2. Um, In fact, I actually considered skipping over it altogether and just reading you a couple of cliff notes, but the events which are set in motion in these games are directly addressed in the main Metal Gear Solid games. They are very important. Uh, So So the Metal Gear Solid are the main ones, arguably. It's honestly, think of it as just one big story. Okay. Yeah, it's all one big story. Well, I mean, this is clearly when they built, question mark, the Metal Gear, so... You'll see. Um, probably, maybe. Fox, it came out in 87. Um, I don't... Yeah, yeah. Games that are older than me frighten me, and I don't like it. And I'm sure so, there's people listening that uh, are were around when this game came out, and we just feel like babies to them, who weren't alive when this game came out, but... Yeah, oh, well. um, the, the Nubis the other day uh, re- re- referred to um, a couple of kids that were playing out on our street as youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so... Okay, <that laughs> okay boomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legit. Um, so let me set the scene for you. The year is 1995. The location, South Africa. We are in an alternative to alternative history where the Cold War did not end in the 1980s, but has continued well into the 1990s. Oh. Americans and Russians are at each other's throats. I mean, um, what's, what's changed there? Well, legit. Uh, <laughs> you play as the iconic badass Solid Snake, years before he became the hero we know him as today. Uh, here, he's a rookie soldier in the oh. special operations unit known as Foxhound. A super great, badass, kick names and ask ass later team of the best of the best. Your commanding officer, a gruff, no nonsense, straight shooter called Big Boss, pops up oh, on the radio. Oh, it's the guy from the video calls. Uh, no. No? Well, y- yes. Yes. Yes, in this game, yes. Um, cool. I'm surprised. I thought you would have heard of Big Boss. Uh, oh, I, it's such a silly name. I know the name. Okay. Um, I feel like, remember from somewhere that he is Snake, but... I feel like that's wrong. That's wrong. I think I just remember a picture of Snake with an eye patch at one point. That's fine. Don't yeah. Don't don't stress too much about that. I understand. Yeah. Um. I understand why you think that. Now, I like this, his eye patch though. Eye patch guys are cool. Interestingly, what you're seeing here is this is almost like the 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 the, the Metal Gear Solid art style, and you're going to see a few drawings like this pop up, um, where they look like sketches. Um, it's a really, really cool style that they continue through almost the entire series. I mean, he looks like he's been colored with coffee stains, and I kind of dig it. Yeah, I see that. It, it, it looks like somebody <laughs> spilled their coffee on a black and white drawing, and they're like, "Well, this is this is Big Boss." <laughs> yeah, cool. cool yeah. Let's add some blues, and we'll call it a day. Um, so Big Boss is like, "Look, here's here's your mission." He pops up on your radio in this game, and he says, "The mission is this: infiltrate the fortress Outer Heaven, 
find your missing teammate, Grey Fox, and learn what you can about a new mysterious weapon called Metal Gear. Is that a code name? Uh, you will find out. So it's a fox hound team. So you have a guy named Fox. Oh yeah, but yeah. he's a snake. Why is he not on a snake team? No, you're absolutely right. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, all these names are code names. Yeah, Big Boss, Soul Snake, Gray Fox. They all have real life names, uh, but these are all their code names, and that's how we talk about them. Somehow, it's only <clears throat> just now hitting me that Solid Snake is in fact not his real name. Would you be surprised if I told you that there are and four snake? names in this no five snake names in the series in total it gets very confusing. no because i did i did know that at least that there are several different snakes from metal gear awesome <clears throat> yep. i did know that one at least um so this is solid snake uh-huh edgy yeah look at his mustache isn't he great i um uh, yeah. uh, no um so this is solid snake's first field operation um, sorry, no, tell. I, I'm, I'm totally wrong. His Chase. face looks too small for how thick his neck is. This is Grey Fox. I'm sorry, this isn't Solid Snake. This is Grey Fox. Oh. Right, this is the guy we need to find. Um, this is Solid <laughs> Snake's first field operation. Yeah, thank you for all the fan art out there. This is a great, this is amazing. Um, he's underprepared, outclassed, and ready for anything. This guy in the right there, he looks so... Off, it looks like somebody who's like, he's, he's like walking away and you fucking insult him. He looks back, he's like, you fucking said what? <laughs> Fuck, fucking said what, mate? I honestly think he's just a soldier. Uh... I mean, he probably is. <laughs> it's just the way that his face has been drawn here. That he looks mm. like, he looks so offended looking back there. Like he um... stopped mid-step. <laughs> so during his mission, Snake meets a local resistance movement composed of Schneider, an ex-architect and the leader of the resistance, Diane, a former positive punk vocalist, and Jennifer, who infiltrated Outer Heaven's medical staff and is searching for her brother who was taken by these mercenaries, these baddies that we're looking for. All right? Who is... Um, in this, Gray I'll Fox, say... question mark? Uh, we'll find out. Oh. Um... <laughs> and that, I'm assuming, is a Metal Gear. Uh, that is, in fact, a Metal Gear. Yes. I'd love to say is people from the 80s, uh, you know, wildly uh, overestimating how technology would look in 10 years. But I fully believe that the military has, like, secret fucking mechs that they don't tell us about. Especially the American military. Like, they have so much fucking tech they don't tell us about that, you know... This is it. Conspiracy chat with Chase. <laughs> conspiracy chat. They probably, I believe too many conspiracies. They probably have Metal Gears. Um, but not about COVID, right? You're not a COVID conspiracy theorist. No. No, yes. No, uh, that's that's real. Hashtag get fucking vaccinated. Um, fucking so, get, I'm getting vaccinated on Thursday. Oh, i have getting my second one in two weeks. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so the majority of your time exploring Outer Heaven is made up of stealthily running around, neutralizing enemies, and trying to reach the boss of that area. Uh, and it's the bosses which really make these games for a lot of people. Even back at the start of the franchise, this was how Kojima got to let his craziness run free. Just to check, mm -hmm. just to check. Um, the, the the game is overall a stealth game, right? Every single game is a stealth game, So yes. are they stealth-based bosses, or are they suddenly action-based bosses? They're mainly stealth-based bosses. You do not have to kill these oh. bosses. You can just knock them out, you can tranquilize them. They always have a bit of a gimmick on how to beat them, generally. The um, only we'll gimmick discuss. I know is the one where you need a second controller. Right, yeah. That is the get only that. one in the series I know, and that's fucking stupid, but I kind of love it. who that is? I th Liquid, question mark? No. Oh, okay, well, then no. Do you know who Liquid is? No, I just know the name. Good, From, okay. again, Metal Gear Awesome. Great, that's fine. <laughs> um, so, the bosses in this game, we have four. We have Shoot Gunner, who... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely... <laughs> I really hope you're joking. No, that's... his name was Shoot Gunner in the original, Wait. and then in the re-release he was renamed to Shot Maker. You're going to notice this happens a few times. Shot Maker is vaguely better, but Shoot No, I'm using their I... original names. Yeah. No. Uh, he has no. a riot gun. That's his gimmick. Um, we have Machine Gun Kid. Do you want to guess what his gimmick is? Uh, fucking shredded arms and no shirt. He's got a machine gun. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, we also have Fire Trooper. Want to guess what oh, kind of gun he has? I have no clue. Um, he has fucking a Pyro from TF2. Um, and we have Dirty Duck, who has a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> 
everybody, everybody with their fucking gun names, the Dirty Duck. Uh, Dirty Duck's gimmick is that he has a boomerang uh, or two boomerangs, and uh, during your boss fight, he shields himself with hostages, and you can which are uh, just as as a duck does, you know, uh, just as a duck does. Uh, yeah. It sounds exactly like a duck to me. I think he has another name, which is like Dirty Coward or something later. But I'm, call, I'm gonna call him <laughs> oh, Dirty shit, Duck. Oh shit, damn! Uh, so defeating these four titans, uh, Snake eventually and finds. Are they titans? <laughs> they kind of look like just generic dudes. What are you talking about? They're titans. Uh... Um, so Snake eventually finds Grey Fox, uh, who tells him that he hasn't been able to find out who the leader of Outer Heaven is. We don't know who's in charge of these mercenaries. Um, but he has been able to learn what Metal Gear is. Metal okay, Gear. so they do, because the mission wasn't to find Metal Gear, the mission was to find Grey Fox. Yeah, well, f- no, the mission was two parts. Find Grey Fox, find out what the hell Metal Gear is. Oh, so Grey Fox okay, has done okay, half okay, that okay. mission for us. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so it is a bipedal mech which can shoot nukes. It seems... That's where the nukes... I knew there were nukes somewhere. It seems that the leader of Outer Heaven, whoever it is, intends to use Metal Gear to conquer the world. I also feel like, again, maybe this is just wildly overestimated. I feel like even in 2020, a bipedal mech that shoots nukes... Yeah, is that dangerous? But you can deal with that from two million miles away with an ICBM... Like, this is not going to take over anybody's world. Heck, in the 90s, they could have launched a fucking I don't missile know. at it okay. and dealt with... <laughs> I feel like this is... It's still, like, dangerous. Well, yeah, d- <laughs> dangerous for some, you know, ground troops, maybe. Not for somebody in a fucking, you know, fighter jet. Yeah, but, but, but you know, the whole idea, surely, is that in order to launch a nuke at this point, it needs to be, like, in a submarine or, like, from a base somewhere. This thing could just walk into the middle of a battlefield and be like, fuck it, boom, there goes the White House. Okay, but at the same time, with the, you know, range of a nuclear blast... There goes your Metal Gear. Yeah, it's you a blew one. Up the White House. It's a one-use fucking suicide mission, <laughs> and they feel like something this massive and big, which is you know, bipedal, so it would have to fucking walk, 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 walk up to the White House, would get blown up by a missile centuries before it got close. Are you? Are they forgetting how populated DC is? Okay, fine, fine. But regardless, it's still bad news, right? We need to take it down. Um, so Snake sets off to find Doctor Petrovich. This is Snake. I, hi, Einstein. Yeah, this is Snake, and this is Petrovich. That's that's Einstein. It, yeah, he looks like Einstein. That's I, is, is, is that just picture. because Einstein worked on nukes? Uh, probably. Yeah, uh, I think it's just a bit of yeah. Also, I Snake looks really bad there. He does, right? He kind of looks like Stallone. Uh, a little does, bit. That was kind of the idea. It was almost oh, like... Oh, was it really? Yeah, it was like, like <laughs> Rambo-esque action. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the the series really kind of begins to translate from Rambo into James Bond, the further in that we get, um, which we'll get to. But it's, Yeah, uh, I, I got the impression. Um, so Petrovich is the mastermind behind Metal Gear. Um, Snake hopes he can learn how to destroy the, the machine, um, and Petrovich is a robotics engineer. Now, he and his daughter Ellen were captured by Outer Heaven and forced to build Metal Gear. He's not a baddie, he's just been forced to build it against his will. Uh, however, before Petrovich can divulge Metal Gear's biggest weakness, uh, we are interrupted by our, f- uh, our fifth boss. Arnold 1 and Arnold 2. These guys are two TX-11 class androids, and we need to kick their ass. Did they... They straight up just put the Terminator in this game. Now, it's important to note that due to copyright reasons, Arnold 1 and Arnold 2 were renamed to Bloody Brad in later releases. (laughs) Because that's straight up just the Terminator. They didn't even fucking try to hide that. They didn't... That's just... That is so... God, copyright in the 80s was wild. They didn't even fucking try. No, Kojima clearly thought, like, no one's going to care. <laughs> but they did. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> so, eventually... So uh, it's wild as well, because I feel like Schwarzenegger himself would kind of love being in a game like this. Oh, 100%. Yeah, like, I think Kojima would also love to work with Schwarzenegger to get him to record stuff. Um, so, eventually, Snake penetrates Outer Heaven's main base and takes out Metal Gear before it can be completed. Uh, it also turns out that... It's, Series over. His big weakness is just stick some C4 on it and it blows up. <laughs> so, you can absolutely deal with it with a missile from far away. Yeah, you, and it you is get just... a rocket launcher, boom. So, it is... Yeah. Never going to take over the world. It wasn't even a real threat. <laughs> also, question mark. So he went to fight it, right? Mm-hmm. Was it shooting nukes at him? No. So it just didn't have any nukes? No, it has like machine guns and rocket launchers as well. Why did it not use the nukes? Because it would blow up outer heaven and it's programmed to like not do that. Well, the... <laughs> so it's whole... It's a launch Central nukes. gimmick is not even like shown. 
This There's is not even the weirdest thing about the series. Metal <laughs> Gear makes sense. The Metal Gear itself is the stupidest part of this entire series so far. <laughs> so far, the Metal Gear itself is makes the least sense of every single thing here. Your commanding officer is called Big Boss because he's your big boss. <laughs> That's fucking fine. I've heard stu- I'm from fucking Annapolis. I've heard stupid military names. Like I oh grew up in a military town. I'm used to stupid military code names. The Metal Gear is a stupid weapon. I'm really glad that you are so on board because it's going to get so you're going to hate this by the time we get to the end. Right. So, anyway, well, to be fair, I hated Res by the end and then I played Resi 8 so good point um, maybe yeah. I'll play these uh, so Snake destroys Metal Gear hooray end of mission uh, good as job he escapes series the over yeah pretty much as he escapes the compound however he's confronted by the mysterious mercenary leader of Outer Heaven who turns out to be Big Boss the whole time our corrupt commander reveals so wait hold no because so, what you're about to I know what you're about to ask and I'm about to explain it to you you're basically okay. like why does he send Snake on a mission to take down himself <laughs> well no 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 no, no. <laughs> it's because the end game of this mission is if he's just going to reveal at the end that it's him all along mm-hmm. then the only person that goes down in this mission if he's successful is one dude who is a rookie soldier um, like, yeah. this doesn't even, like, take down or destabilize the military. He takes down this one random fucking rookie soldier. Yeah. He's just pissed. He's pissed because Snake blew up his thing. His, his big baby Metal Gear. So, he told him to do it! So, our corrupt commander reveals that he had been using his He's not corrupt, he's a moron! <laughs> he'd been, uh, so, he'd been using his connections to steal military intelligence and establish his own military force, Outer Heaven. A big boss does not agree with any of the big nation's philosophies and wants to establish, Wait, quote, what is, a fortress nation. What is the big nations? Like, your US, your Russia. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, I, I wasn't sure if that was like a set like organization of no, nations, no, like yeah, no, no. or something. He like just that fucking was... hates countries and governments and he thinks they're all a bunch of wanks. Yeah, what um, a mood. Relatable. Yeah. So he wants to establish what we, what he calls a fortress nation. Basically, he wants to make his own country made up just of mercenaries so he doesn't need to work for the US anymore. He's sick of all this nationalist bullshit and his plan was he sent in the rookie So he snake. wants to make nationalist bullshit. To escape from nationalist mm. bullshit. Yeah, but the idea is like, so it's, it's like the Fortress Nation will be a, like a basically one big private military company. It's like a safe space for soldiers is what he wants to establish. That's his plan, right? And he will, and then they work for anybody. It doesn't matter. They'll work for the US. They'll work for China. They'll work for Russia. But they have no allegiance to any country. They only have allegiance to themselves and being a soldier. That's the idea, right? So, I mean, <clears throat> sure, I guess that makes sense. It's kind of the central conceit of the entire franchise of whether or not that a makes sense b is a good thing and c wh- whether or not it's 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 understandable that you would want that as a soldier that is really the central theme i mean it it makes sense i feel like whether it's a good thing or an ethical thing is a much wider discussion that is yeah. not for the purview of this video uh, it is because we're gonna get oh, down that fant- rabbit hole yeah yeah you're just trying to <laughs> yeah. weasel opinions out of me aren't you um, so his whole plan was to send in the rookie snake to Outer Heaven, hoping to have him captured and feed misinformation back to the US government, but had quite obviously underestimated what snake's abilities. What kind of misinformation? Um, honestly, I don't remember. But he, basically, he wanted just to point actual, in the wrong way. The only information he wouldn't have in that is that Big Boss is the Big Boss. Yeah, but Big Boss is pissed also, now. Also, that fucking foreshadowing that name that he would be the Big Boss of the game. Right. That... Right. Don't 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 say right like that's a clever thing and not that's just so good. Not just stupid. <laughs> so having lost Metal Gear and much of his force, uh, Big Boss starts the self-destruct sequence for Outer Heaven and promises that if he's going to die, he will not die alone. He'll take Snake down with him. Damn it! Oh, of yep. course he will. What but a classic Snake, villain. He defeats Big Boss. Um, in the last big battle and escapes Outer Heaven as it blows to pieces. Oh, and Diane, uh, who you might remember is one of the randoms that works for the Resistance towards the start, uh, she suddenly pops up on your radio and tells you that she loves you. Uh, Roll credits. What? Wait, wait. Did we even meet her? Or was she just kind of... She she would pop mention. up. She pops. She kind of pops up at the start. You meet her, and then she pops up a little bit on your radio throughout, and it's like, "Snake, look out! There's traps ahead," or whatever. I feel like I like in the smallest sense vaguely remember this from again fucking Metal Gear Awesome. Yeah. But 
the majority of your story is via radio call. Now, you don't need to worry because she is not important and we will never see her again. Oh, fuck it. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> um, so, but overall, pretty simple, right? The, the story so far, you know, it's a little bit convoluted, but it's it, you can follow it. It's all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's stupid, but yeah, I can follow. Yeah. Um, it's the simplest game in the franchise. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, can, country mile. I can tell. It's, it's not complicated and the weapon doesn't make sense. Pretty much. And I really hope the Metal Gears get, you know... Start to make more sense instead of something that can be very easily thwarted by military tech from 30 years ago, let alone today. So, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Um, It's Christmas Eve, 1999. Solid Snake is still working for Foxhound and has grown as a soldier. They clearly have shit. Like, holiday policies? He's still working on fucking Christmas Eve? I mean, he's like Black Ops, isn't he? I don't care. Give him the day off. (laughs) He's still in Snake. Have you not heard the Snoopy song? That says that the military stops on Christmas. No. So they can... Fucking Snoopy versus the Red Baron. That, like, Christmas song where it's like, Oh, it's Christmas Day. We're gonna, like, go shake hands and have a turkey dinner. No, I don't know that. I don't know that song. I'll play it for you later. People down in the comments will tell you about it. So... um, Military stops on Christmas. As a rule. Uh, (laughs) Foxhound now has a new commander after Big Boss turned out to be a baddie. This guy. After he turned out to be the... Oh, wait! Colonel Roy Campbell. That's the fucking guy from the Metal Gear Awesome. Yes, yes. This is now your new man in your ear. Uh, He's your new colonel. He's, He's your man, right? But Roy Campbell is not the only new addition to Foxhound. We also have McDonald slash Kazuhira slash Benedict Miller. Uh, no, his name changes no, a lot. That's fuck you. That's fucking what's his name from Resi? Albert Wesker. That's fucking Wesker. <laughs> what with a mullet? <laughs> <That's> fu- <laughs> Wesker has a mullet. No, he doesn't. Wesker's got like short. Oh, you're like, right. You're right. Back hair. That yeah. still looks like Wesker. Uh, it does. Yeah, that's just Wesker. This is this is Kazuhira Miller. Um, if he's not a villain by the end of this. He's not. He's not. He's your pal. He's going to be a villain by the end of this. <laughs> so, uh, this character's name changes a lot over the course of the games, uh, with very little explanation. Why? <laughs> There's no explanation. Oh, He's either McDonald Miller, Kazuhira Miller, or Benedict Miller. Fucking pick one, alright? Generally, people call him Kaz Miller, or Master Miller. I That's would, his name. I would just call him Miller. Okay, that we can seems just call the him consistent Miller. thing. Um, he's most well known for his shades, his sunglasses. Uh, he pops up on your radio whenever you need him to give tips and tricks to the player. He is a total legend. Absolute fucking badass. Love him to bits. Great, great guy. Yeah, Wesker's a legend. So Campbell sets the scene for us. Um, NATO has managed to achieve full global nuclear disarmament. Hooray! Wouldn't that be fucking yeah. nice? So that's like, that's the world we now live in. This, is now, this is now the 90s being very fucking hopeful for the future. Um, and then 30 years later, we're going... <laughs> um, however, a major oil crisis seriously, aff- seriously affects the global economy. Boom. Uh, petrol deposits are running out faster than previous estimates. Now, to counter this energy crisis, a Czech scientist called Dr. Marv bioengineers a new species of algae called oilix to provide a new powerful energy source. Why? What, wait, because wait, we're th- running out of oil. Uh, who cares? There was... So many sources of renewable energy. Yeah. Even back in the 90s. Yeah. Like, nuclear just in the 90s. Yeah. When the no, whole... no, no nuclear, though, because we don't want any nukes. So we don't okay, want any... yeah. fine. No nukes. Water, wind, air. The Avatar can come in here and fucking solve your entire <laughs> energy crisis. Why make new oil? Well, because he found a new one. It's made of algae. It's fucking We don't need oil. But it's algae, they're though, just gonna, They're going to spur on the fucking climate crisis. So <laughs> Extinction Rebellion's coming for his ass. Well, right, so Dr. Marv's like, I fucking invented this new, like, natural oil, right? Al- Fuck fucking you, algae oil, right? Fuck you, so, Marv. However, before he can present his discovery to the USA, he is kidnapped of by soldiers. Of course it's to the US. Yeah. Who else wants the oil? From the country, Zanzibar land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna put my drink down here now. It fucking... Excuse me? Yep, so Zanzibar Land have captured him. Is this a... The country. Is this an amusement park? No, it's Zanzibar Land, man. You don't know Zanzibar Land? This is an amusement park. You pull up a map right now, I can show you where Zanzibar Land is. I really hope this isn't a real no, place not, and I'm not just not. defending a real country. No, no, no. Zanzibar Land is a real Zanzibar. place. Zanzibar? That sounds like a country. Yeah. Zanzibar Land sounds like its premier tourist attraction. Yeah. So Zanzibar Land want to hold the world hostage. Yeah. Of course they do. By controlling this new energy supply, this algae. And we also learn the rest of the world will never get on with their 
numerous sources of renewable no. energy. But they mo- need this weird algae that nobody even knows about yet. Most importantly of all, Zanzibar land, Chase, have nukes. Oh, yeah. because America, who wants it, doesn't have more of those. No, no, nuclear disarmament, man. No one's got any nukes anymore. Oh, I forgot about that yeah. part. nuclear disarmament. Nobody has nukes. Let's be real, it's the US. They still have nukes somewhere. So, in a world where NATO have nu- no nuclear warheads whatsoever, a country threatening the world with a sudden supply is bad news. So, Campbell sends Solid Snake into Zanzibar land to rescue Dr. Marv and destroy the nukes. Very simple mission. So, exploring Zanzibar land, uh, Snake sees a familiar face. <laughs> Dr. Petrovich. Oh, Einstein's back. Mm. And turns he looks out, like fucking Stallone again. So it turns out that Kel Surprise, um, Zanzibar Land haven't just kidnapped Dr. Marv to work on his super algae, uh, but they've also kidnapped Dr. Petrovich God, as well this to guy build can't get them. A break. What do you think they've kidnapped him to build them? Another useless weapon that can get blown up really easily. A Metal Gear, yes. It, I really <laughs> hope that it is a new iteration of Metal Gear that is potential it's the same metal gear it's pretty much it's the exact yeah so <laughs> it's identical. still a useless fucking weapon so and they won't even use the nukes which are its central conceit so um i can guarantee we're never going to see a nuclear explosion in this entire series because nobody wants to blow themselves up do you think no you were never going to see any nuclear explosion I mean, in this entire series I, I'm, I'm definitely speaking too early <laughs> yes you are but we're not in this game <laughs> not in this game not yeah. in this game um So what's even the point of them having nukes? Because they're not going to fucking use them. So that's not even the only familiar face. Another blast from the past appears in Grey Fox, your old colleague from Metal Gear 1 who you had to rescue. I didn't say this earlier, but Mm -hmm. he looks like a pirate. Uh, He does look a little bit like a pirate. I think the background looks like sea, like the sea. I mean, it's definitely not. that. It's definitely the straight line mustache and a little goatee. It also turns out that the leader of Zanzibar Land is none other... (laughs) Than Big Boss. That rascal. He's at it again, trying to create his mercenary soldier nation. Wait. Yeah. So... So Big Boss survived the end of Metal Gear 1. Okay, yeah, yeah, not not that. So Zanzibar Land is the military soldier nation. Or did he just somehow, like, randomly coup a country and become Um, the leader? (laughs) Totally fair. It's not really that properly explained, but the understanding among the fan base is basically that he found an island, called it Zanzibar Land, and has now created his soldier nation. Okay, so, okay. I, like, if this was, like, just an organization, that'd be one thing, but, like, it being a country, I'm like, Mm. that throws a million other questions into this. Um, so, yeah, so not only is, is Big Boss still alive, but B, Grey Fox has actually defected to work for Big Boss. I, I'm not really, I... He, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, so he believes in what Big Boss is trying to build, and he has an undying loyalty to him because Big Boss saved his life years and years and years ago, back when he was still the commander of Foxhound twice. So he's like, this guy, fucking, I'm all, I'm all about it now. I've learned what he's actually trying to do. I'm conflicted. Now, before Snake can react, uh, Grey Fox disappears, and Snake's, Snake journeys deeper and deeper into Zanzibar land, muscling through various boss fights, which include... Running Man, a former Olympic runner turned terrorist. That's... No. Red Blaster, an explosive expert from Russia. Stop. The Four Horsemen, uh, these guys in the white that look like they're in baseball outfits. An assassination squad specializing in confined spaces. Predator, a jungle, jungle warfare expert. Uh, please note, Predator's name was changed to Jungle Evil some later due to copyright. Uh, <laughs> Night- he looks... Yeah. <laughs> he looks like somebody walking out of a fucking weeb convention who just got past yeah. the last Naruto panel. This guy is uh, Night Sight, an assassin from Vietnam who uses state-of-the-art stealth suit, which renders him invisible. Now, I, I, I don't really remember on. who's who, right? You get the general gist. And finally, my favourite, Black Ninja. A drug-enhanced ninja. God damn it. So he fucking is a fucking... Yeah. Ah. He's a drug-enhanced ninja who it is revealed is actually Schneider from Metal Gear 1. Who you probably don't remember because he wasn't that important. But he was the leader of the resistance group. The Snake I Man remember the name because yeah. I thought it was funny the way you said Schneider. Schneider. Um, Schneider. Now, he joined Big Boss's cause because NATO blew up his home after Outer Heaven exploded at the end of the first game. NATO were like, oh, that fucking facility just exploded. Bam, bam, bam. Just like dropped some fucking bombs on it. Um, absolutely wrecked everyone's day. Um, I can't remember we'll exactly why they did We'll get rid of the nukes, but we'll still keep the bombs. Pretty much. I don't remember exactly why they did it. Uh, probably to teach those ruffians a lesson. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, he dies like five minutes after this is revealed to you anyway, so he's dead now. Um, 
Of a- course. After all this, Snake then learns that Dr. Petrovich is also working for Big Boss willingly. So it's, so before he was taken, oh. but now he's working for him willingly. Wait, hold up one second. Mm-hmm. Whilst we still have the boss thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, during our, 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 our nice little break, uh, pulling aside the curtain, breaking the fourth wall, during our nice break between Metal Gear 1 and 2, yeah. uh, I, we, we discussed the fact that um, he doesn't actually kill anyone. No. So, do they just fucking give up? No, no. After you, do they stalk much. you for the rest of the game? Or are they like, oh no, he got past my zone! It's... I can't leave here! I guess he's just, he's not my problem anymore, I'm fine with this! Yeah, Goodbye. pretty much. Um, They're shit. They should all be fired. <laughs> they either have them stalk us through the entire thing, mm-hmm. or fucking kill them. Mm. Because if you, if Snake's a pacifist, okay, he's only a soldier that, when he needs to I'm be. I'm fine with that. Yeah, like that's great. Like good on Snake. But if they're gonna be a pacifist. These are the shittiest soldiers in the world. They're not going to fucking chase him after they get away. Okay, right. So you either, you have two options. You either kill them in the games or you knock them out. So he's not a pacifist. Oh, uh, yes. Because you knock them out for the entirety of this mission because nobody ever wakes up during your several hour to day mission. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he's he's out of the picture. We're never going to see him again, right? Fuck him. Doesn't, it honestly doesn't matter. What? I just thought you'd get a giggle out of Black Ninja, right? So um, after, <sighs> after all of this, yes, yeah, so Dr. Petrovich is working for Big Boss willingly. He wasn't kidnapped at all, the dick. Uh, he just believes in Big Boss's plan for a mercenary nation out with NATO's control. So they're all like on board this idea. Big Boss is like, look, just come work for me. I'll keep you safe. I'll you know give you a fucking pension. Just stay with me rather than go work for these dickheads who don't care about you, right? Um, so he's now building the metal. He's built the Metal Gear on purpose to help Big Boss. It's also worth mentioning that as you play through the game, random children will appear and give you tips to help out. Wait, no. We learn that Big Boss has been taking in war torn orphans and training them up as child soldiers that is important and we will come back to that way down the line somebody fucking get the coney people in on this one (laughs) yeah Ah. Um, so eventually snake makes it to where dr marv has been kept prisoner but he was too late marv has been dead this whole time however he hid the oilix data this algae he's working on on a fucking mgx cartridge like the game is on, so you need to go and find that data, like in a room. Um, and then you realize that it was never in the game, it was the one you were playing on the whole time, and you need to go mail your cartridge to <laughs> Konami for the real game, and that has part two. So with Snake retrieving the data, he steps into a hangar uh, and prepares to destroy the, me- the new Metal Gear. Uh, however, Grey Fox is waiting for him. Um, he's actually piloting oh, the looks, Metal Gear. He looks less like a pirate now. Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, I really love this fan art. Again, I just found this on wait, Google, but wait, wait, wait. it's really good. That brings up a question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, did the Metal Gear in the first game have a pilot? No. So why does it have a pilot now? Because it's like you can't really trust fucking automation and AI and shit. It's better. Like this one's a bit better because like you can jump in and control it yourself and all that sort of shit, right? Um, it's basically the mentality. You can, you can't, you can't go. You know, there's nothing greater than the mind of a, tacti- a tactician of a soldier. That's the, the the mentality. I'll kick your twisted mind out of you. Yeah. That's what Snake says. Because uh, Snake's like, oh, I can't believe you. Turn your back on the US government, you prick, and all that sort of shit, Snake's right? Snake's got a nice ass. Um, Just on an unrelated. <laughs> so, yes, um, he's piloting the mech, but Snake makes short work of it, blowing it to Kingdom Come and Grey Fox with it. So, Grey Fox, dead. Um, trying to escape, Snake meets Big Boss once again, and the two duke it out. Uh, now, you do not have any weapons in this fight. God. This is exactly how it goes down, this picture. So in a last-ditch effort to kill the old grizzled also, bastard... Also, in oh. what world, right, that is not flames. That looks like he's shooting fucking napalm at the guy. I mean, yeah, that's just the drawing, though, isn't it? It's that, just... looks, that looks like he's got fucking, like, napalm gel. Mm. So basically what happens is you, 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 you don't have any of your weapons, right? Big Boss strips you of all your weapons. So the boss fight is basically, Big Boss is hunting you. You need to go, you need to find a lighter, you need to find some hairspray, um, and you use it as a flamethrower to burn him alive, killing Big Boss once and for all. I know a guy once who did this and almost died. I think we all knew someone who's tried this a couple of times, and it's a bad idea. Well, it's because, like, <laughs> like if, if you, like, still have the lighter up mm-hmm. when it does... Then it sucks the fire back into the can, and then you've got a pressurized can filled with fire oh. and flammable liquid, and you literally have to chuck it like a grenade before it explodes, sending shrapnel at you. 
and he did it. Try, it was just, this was in the scouts, and he tried to do it to light a campfire, and then he threw just the can, threw the whole fucking can. It was like a like a spray deodorant, like a lynx or an axe. He fucking threw it into the fire, and the fucking scout people had to like grab all these small children and throw them behind fucking picnic tables to hide from shrapnel before the bomb went off. What state did you grow up in? Uh, this was this was in Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Uh, although this didn't ha- I think this happened in either Virginia or Pennsylvania. Oh my god. Somewhere <laughs> east coast generally somewhere scouts have a lot of stupid things happen. So Yes, yeah, so, so back to the story. Uh, so yeah, basically, this is it. You, you kill Big Boss, right? You set him on fire and he's fucking dead. Um, but just before he dies, Big Boss has one last reveal for Snake. Big I twist. am your father. Big Boss is Snake's father. <laughs> Can't believe you called it. I was, I was joking. <laughs> yeah. I was... God, t- fucking... Okay, so I used to think, right, that Kojima... <laughs> Yeah, was like a clever. He is witty. No, this is at the start of his no, career. This no, is him just enjoying no, shit. No, this is him <laughs> saying, "I don't know how to make my own ideas. I'm just gonna rip off every fucking movie I've seen in the past twenty years." What are you talking about? He invented Running Man, a former Olympic runner turned terrorist. Where is he? <laughs> As of right now, this series is kind of shit and predictable. Yeah. No, no. Look, that th- that's really. The I do know that it gets bad shit. But as of these first two games... You are going to start wishing Kojima step kept being uh, shitty and predictable. Kojima, Kojima has never claimed to be anything other than someone who just really fucking loves 80s movies. Has always <laughs> wanted to put them into... it. Like, this is... He goes on the record as saying this. Like, this sort of shit, he, he knows he's stealing from it. He doesn't care. He's like... <laughs> This is just I mean, fun. It's fun, fun to I can respect the o- the honesty of just I don't give a fuck. Like how fun would it be? Like isn't that great? I want to make that the like the story of my game. And like it's it's fun. And Metal Gear Solid, we get a lot more um, individual. Oh, um, he finally got his like iconic outfit. Yes. When does he go in a box? Um, or did fucking Smash Bros. invent that? Metal Gear Solid is when that starts being a mechanic. It's okay. not. It doesn't happen once. This is a mechanic. You have a cardboard box. If enemies are walking about, you can put the box over yourself. The enemies will walk over. So he just look at this it box. and carry on. So one. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like we should get into this later, but I have just so many questions. Okay. One. So he carries it about with him. Yeah. At all times, not like folded up or anything. No, no, it's folded up. It's, it's like so. Little, so little, he little. has the time. <laughs> yeah. And what I'm assuming mechanically is like a second yeah. to fully unpack, unfold, put together mm. a box of a large enough size to catch him, which then mm-hmm. sits in the center of a hallway yeah. and people walk up and go, ah, a box. Right. So it's really interesting you say that because, and this is actually one of the things I really love about it. Metal Gear Solid 1, yes, absolutely. Box in the hallway. People will go, ah, a box. But then later in the game, like later in the game, later in the franchise, guards will walk up. And if the box is in the middle of the hallway, like, not near any other storage or barrels or shit, they will, like, kick it and be like, what's this doing here? So you need to start being tactical on where you put your box. Okay. It's good well, shit. It's good shit. At least yeah. they started thinking of that because, yeah, whilst I recognize that that is a very stupid thing to be mm-hmm. on about. Uh... Kojima invented stealth as we understand it today. As in Metal Gear Solid, specifically this game, in PlayStation 1, this was like your first real proper stealth game. And it's it's still got some of the best stealth mechanics in AI ever. It's all dumb and silly. Of course it is. And we're going to get to probably one of my favorite dumb and silly ones when we get to Metal Gear Solid 5. But this is good shit. Mechanically, it's well designed. Anyway, let's jump into the story. Metal Gear Solid. So, <sighs> Metal Gear 2 specifically... It's a really great game, which hasn't aged too badly. But for a lot of people, myself included, the series really begins with Metal Gear Solid, which released nine years after its predecessor. So nine years have passed between Metal Gear 2 and Metal Gear Solid. All of our characters now have voice actors, especially Solid Snake, who is voiced by the illustrious David Hayter. Now remember that, that is very important for later. Very important. I don't know why, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but I feel like, and I, I think I've heard this David guy's yeah, voice. Metal and he, Gear. And he's good, but I feel like if this game were to come out in like 2020, you know who'd voice him? Who? Do, do, do you want to take a guess at who I think would voice uh, him? In- Troy Baker, because he voices everything. Nolan North, because he voices everything. Who are you thinking? I'm thinking Matt Mercer. 
Oh, Matt Mercer would be an excellent. <laughs> I, I think it would be Sorry, Matt yeah. Mercer in a fucking heartbeat. No, Matt Mercer would be, but David Hayter is let's, iconic. Let's let's fan cast our ideal <laughs> Metal Gear Solid game. Um, so um, you know, you know, there's a movie coming out, right? Is there? Oscar Isaac is playing Solid Snake. I don't know that. Uh, Paul Dameron from Star Wars. Oh! Yeah, yeah, he's playing Solid Snake. It's, it's oh, being filmed looks, right now. He looks like Solid yeah, Snake, actually. Yeah, 100%. Oh, um, damn. I have no idea how the fuck they're going to turn these into movies. No idea. <laughs> no, absolutely no idea. Is, um, it, is it, like, based on the game, or is it an original movie plot? It's it's based on the game. It's based, based on Metal Gear Solid, oh, from what we can gather. When so, is it meant to come out? Oh, it, it's, like, early production right now. Like, it's it's written, Oh, so and it's, it'll be, like, yeah. ten years from now. Yeah, it's, it's been delayed due to COVID, the film. Of course, it has. Um, but no, very excited for it. We'll um, see it one century. So, the year is 2005. The location, oh. a nuclear weapons facility in Alaska called Shadow Moses. So, oh, we're... Oh, I recognize that name from somewhere. It's it's like infamous. This is infamous, famous. Wait a this minute. Is the location. Isn't this a fucking stage in Smash Bros? Uh, it absolutely is. I'm pretty... Yeah, yeah this is a yeah. fucking stage... I love that, like, half of my Metal Gear knowledge Smash comes from Bros. fucking Smash Bros. <laughs> So it turns out that the U.S. government hasn't actually gotten rid of all its wow. nukes. Wow, <laughs> I'm so shocked and amazed. I never would have guessed that. I totally didn't say that way back when you told me the fucking NATO plan last game. It's been a massive America yeah. not getting rid of their nukes? What? So it's been amassing them in secret. Um, under new leadership, Foxhound has gone rogue. They have taken over the facility of Shadow Moses, gathered hostages... Wait, what? Yeah, and presented one demand to Washington. Is Snake still a member? Mm, nope. Okay. So this is... Yeah, this is almost like... Foxhound has always been like... It's like 30 people, right? We've only ever seen like a small handful of them. Uh-huh. Um, so you're about to learn who, but basically they've... A bun- about five or six of them have gone, fuck this shit, we're the new Foxhound, and they go and take over Shadow Moses. Liquid. So. Probably. Basically what happens is they go take over the facility and they give one demand to Washington. The delivery of the remains of the legendary soldier Big Boss. Unless the demands are met within 24 hours, a nuclear weapon will be launched. Wait, why do they want Big Boss? You'll find out. That's the mystery. Why do they want Big Boss? So first of all, Colonel Roy Campbell uh, gets Solid Snake the on the phone. iconic fucking screen. Yes. There it is. Um, on the phone, he tells Snake, look, it's time to come out of retirement. All right, Snake's retired uh, by this wait, point. Wait, 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 wait. So he did two missions yeah. as a rookie. Yeah. And no, he like, did one mission as a rookie, kicked ass, and then came back as like a bit better. Oh, <laughs> I'm a generic second tier on the ladder soldier. I am now done. Yeah, I, I'm done. Military, yeah. fuck that. Um, I'm retired. I'm like it. 30 years old. But fuck it, I have enough money saved up, apparently. I'm retired. If you want to play a drinking game, uh, drink every time Snake retires. Because <laughs> it happens a lot. Uh, you'd be surprised. Oh, um, God, so, dude. Colonel Roy Campbell... Like fucking Cosmic yeah. Kiryu. <laughs> he tells Snake the mission. First, rescue the hostages. Specifically, DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and the President of Arms Tech, Kenneth Baker. So we have to find these two guys. They've been taken hostage. Okay. Second... Take down Foxhound's six members. These are our boss fights. We have Psychomantis. Who <gasps> has... That's the guy! And oh, he's is... the one person I know! This is your avatar as well. The gas mask. Wait, what? You know, I'm, I'm, I've made myself look like a character from this and made uh, you look like it. Yeah. You're going to have a gas mask like uh, Psychomantis. But this is the <clears throat> fucking guy who you have to have the second controller for, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. it's the only fight in the game I know. <clears throat> so he has That's powerful stupid. <laughs> psychic abilities. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, we also have Sniper Wolf, a beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. I love her. Decoy Octopus, a master of disguise. Uh, dude. Octopus? Mm-hmm. That they're all named after animals. Mantis, wolf, octopus. Oh. Vulcan raven, oh. a giant, and shaman. <laughs> is that just a massive barrel of bullets on his back? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. He's a fucking cowboy. Yes. Uh, and it's their new leader... It's McCree. Liquid Snake. Oh, I was right. Liquid Snake. Also... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> that just looks like the fucking guy from the last game who I said it's not like yeah I know you're thinking that's Miller it's not um, at this time no further information is known he, about Liquid Snake he looks like like a fucking Final Fantasy boss mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like he's like 
big magic man gonna yep. come fucking ruin your day. Liquid's great. Oh, he's British as well, by the way. I should point this out. He speaks with a British accent. He's like, hello, brother. How is your day going? It's what? very it, like that. Aren't they all American? Uh, yeah, but Liquid's not. He's British. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so Snake breaks into Shadow Moses and hunts for Donald Anderson. Uh, just like before, he has Colonel Roy Campbell leading the mission in his ear. Now, Roy Campbell has a personal stake this time, though. His oh. niece, Meryl, is among the hostages on Shadow Moses. I know that name. You do know this. This is now just becoming, like, how many pieces can I line up to Metal Gear Awesome? Metal Gear Awesome is almost exclusively Metal Gear Solid 1, so I wouldn't be surprised if you knew a lot of this already. Oh uh, hell yeah. yeah. So, um, he asks Snake to find her as part of the mission. She's she's somewhere in Shadow Moses. Because Foxhound is now so dangerous with psychics and sexy snipers and so on, the US government brings in Dr. Naomi Hunter to develop nanomachines to increase Snake's combat capabilities. So before the mission, she has injected you with some nanomachines. Sure. So now Snake's a bit stronger and a bit better at, at working. Uh, Why she, not? Yeah, she too is on call with the radio whenever the player needs help. We also have Mei Ling and Natasha Romanenko, but they're not very important and kind of just serve to give tutorials and give someone for Snake to flirt with. So here they are. Um, of yeah, they're not that massively important. And finally, we have Master Kazuhira Miller, who has oh, returned. Oh, Wesker's back. Yeah, making a return with his sexy sunglasses, who provides combat information as well as fun general knowledge facts about Alaska. Um, you can call him and he'll be like, Excuse yeah, me? he'll tell you stuff about like the, 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 the trees that grow in Alaska. Like, Snake, did you know this? He loves this shit. This is his <laughs> shit. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm going to tell you this now about him so we don't have to waste time later. Um, so This there... is the best part of the game so far yeah. is that we've just got a random Alaskan facts guy. <laughs> <clears throat> so Miller is basically like, he taught Snake everything he knows. He taught him his combat, he taught him his training, he's Master Miller, that's what he's known as. Oh, now, okay. I will I will highlight now, later on in Metal Gear Solid 5, Miller, um, you pick up like podcasts, almost like audio logs, um, and one of the audio logs that you find is like a five part like mini series that you can listen to while exploring of Master Kazuhira Miller trying to cook another character the perfect American hamburger. Like, his plan is after after he retires, he wants to open up a burger joint, and he's trying to cook, like, the perfect hamburger. What a le- I would it's, go. He's amazing. He's I would so go. good. I, it's the biggest thing I've missed since I left the U.S. Perfect American hamburgers and hot dogs, because they're just not the same over here. Totally fair. I'm not going to argue with they're you. They're not the same. Especially <laughs> fucking hot dogs. This is going to devolve into a rant that you can pause the recording. <laughs> yes, and whenever you die, and you probably know this as well, um, you will get a codec call from either Colonel Roy, Roy Campbell or Master Miller, where they go, Snake! Snake! And it goes, da 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 <laughs> And it's like, fucking iconic. It's good shit, right? Um, anyway, Snake eventually finds the DARPA chief Anderson locked in a cell, who tells us that not only does this evil foxhound have shit tons of nukes in the facility, but they also have... What do you think they have? A useless fucking trash weapon. Metal, a Metal Gear, known as Metal Gear Rex. Oh, this it's one a, has a name. new version. They will now all have names. Are the, is it upgraded? Does it have new functionality? You'll is it going to be it. actually useful now, or is it still another bullshit, shitty weapon? I will just tell you right now, it's basically previous Metal Gears, but it can be piloted, and it's <sighs> bigger. Do they ever, like, actually become a useful weapon, or are they always something that could be very easily taken out with, like, a fighter jet? Oh, no. Uh, Metal Gear 2 has, like, a very scary... Uh, okay. Version, yeah. Metal oh, Gear 2 oh, has arguably... Only the Metal Gear 2? And yeah. then suddenly they become devolved? Yeah, you'll see why. Okay. Um, so... Because after that, Metal Gear isn't a machine. It's in our hearts. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, before uh, but before Donald Anderson could tell Snake any more, he dies, weirdly, of a heart attack. Before Snake can react, an From enemy micro-bots. guard... microbots. An enemy Just guard Naomi's suddenly... Naomi's a traitor. No... Yes. Before Snake can react, an enemy guard suddenly appears and points their gun at us. But Snake calls them out for being a stupid rookie. Snake's like, you're a fucking idiot, you've left the safety on, right? What? It turns out that this guard is actually Roy Campbell's niece, Meryl, undercover, and she fucking hates being called a rookie. Like, it really gets under her skin. She's fucking rigid I mean, about it. Is she a rookie? 
Um, pretty much, yeah. She's she's about as experienced as Snake is in his first mission met back in Metal Gear One. Um, okay. Yeah. So with two hostages down and one to go, Snake and Meryl separate, and Snake eventually finds his third hostage, the president of Arms Tech, Kenneth Baker. Now, unfortunately, Baker is tied to a pillar in the center of a room, surrounded by C4, ready to blow. Before, oh, yeah, before Snake could do much about this, boom, it is boss fight time, and one of the most iconic characters of the series appears. Revolver Ocelot. One of the members of Fox Out, <laughs> Cowboy Man. That fucking... <laughs> yep. <clears throat> now, I want you to really pay attention. He okay. is really important. Um, so He feels like a very odd one... To- yeah. Actually, now that you say that, the name Ocelot sounds really familiar to me. Yeah. Revolver Ocelot, no, but the name Ocelot He's one of the most familiar. important characters in the entire franchise. See, um, the last time you said that, the guy died <laughs> ten minutes later. <laughs> so... Yeah, but believe me this time, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this to help you because this uh, is, there's so many characters. Uh, there are like 12 that you need to pay attention to. He is one of them. Okay. So, Revolver Ocelot. Revolver Ocelot is a fucking badass. Um, he only uses revolvers to fight, <laughs> and he flips his guns around, like, like throws them in the air, and as he catches it, it's like a perfect aim shot. He's just so cool. I love him. Yeah. Um, so there's a boss fight with him. You, you kick his ass. Um, n- n- difficult. He's, he's a difficult boss, but you beat him. And Ocelot decides, fuck you, and he blows the C4 charges. But before he can, almost out of nowhere, a ninja appears, cut, <laughs> cuts off Ocelot's hand, and deactivates the C4 before disappearing. That ninja looks so familiar from somewhere, and I can't think of where. <clears throat> um, I mean, it looks, I want to say it's the Smash Bros. stage. It, it, it might be from the Smash Bros. stage. It might. He's also in the poster at the start. I showed. Well, you. yes, I. Yeah. I, I I feel like it's important because he was the most highlighted person outside of Snake. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like he's definitely important, but Um, Snake's brother or something. So the the ninja appears, cuts off Ocelot's hand, and deactivates the C4, and then disappears. That's Big Um, Boss. Big Boss isn't actually dead. (laughs) Ocelot, embarrassed and furious, picks up his hand and just (laughs) Is he going to do a fucking Ethan Winters? No, he's not. No, oh, he's not. no. Um, so with, well, actually. Um, <laughs> yes! <laughs> we, will, we will come back to Ocelot when he becomes relevant again. He is not relevant Either that or he's going to have a robo hand. He's going to do a Luke Skywalker. So with Snake and uh, Kenneth Baker now alone, uh, Baker gives Snake a disc full of data on Metal Gear Rex. He's like, this is everything you need to know. It's the blueprints, it's everything. Uh, and tells him where in the facility he can find Metal Gear Rex's chief engineer, Dr. Hal Emmerich, also known as Otacom in the fan base. Now before also okay. succumbing to a heart attack. He dies as well of a heart attack. Um, so, yep, 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 Also, yep. and, the, uh-huh. you can take this off the record if you'd like, going back to Anderson, just because I'm seeing his picture now, and trying to piece it together to, uh, to Metal Gear Awesome, is that the guy that you find on the toilet? Yes. Oh, why did you mention that? That's the best part. Sorry, yeah. Um, That's okay, the best well, fucking part. Right, you if, if I'm taking a shit. If I'm also being that guy, all right, there's also something really important, not important, there's something interesting that happens here. Uh, so Meryl, you know how Meryl's in a, in a guard uniform when you find them? Yes. Um, there's, a, there's a soldier that you see um, prior to finding her who is like, he's, he's like, taking a shit and he's got diarrhea um, <laughs> and you like knock him out and it's like a bit of a joke that character is actually kind of important <laughs> a little bit it doesn't really matter that much but uh, I'm going to tell you that now I'll remind you of it later when it's important um, leaving out the best parts of this yeah. game why are all these people dying of heart attacks find out after this um, the gist is this uh, Snake is now getting ready to hunt down Otacon, this guy that created the Metal Gear Rex. Cool. Um, but we are interrupted with a call from a mysterious number. Ooh. It's the ninja that cut off Revolver Ocelot's hand. Now, he warns Snake of some upcoming traps, and Snake's like, what do I call you? And he goes, call me Deep Throat. God. T- yeah. Why does Kojima just... Okay. Well, it's because he has a really bassy throat. Sure. I think it's, it's a yeah. translation. Yeah. I, but also, on unrelated, just because I'm like looking at his picture here, is he a robot? Uh, he's a cybernetic ninja. He is not a robot. Okay. Does he only have one eye? Um, or is no. that just a mask? It's just a mask. Just a mask. That looks really inconvenient for somebody who has two eyes, though. No, it's like it just it like funnels your your vision. Anyway, that's, so that's, ne- that's really inconvenient. Next on our list of oh, baddies, barrel of bullets, boy. Yeah. I, I like Vulcan Raven a lot. Um, <laughs> we we fight him in a massive freezer in like the basement of Shadow Moses. I don't remember what Do he's keeping. Um, you, you fight him. So before we battle, he tells us a few things about himself. 
He tells us that he is the champion of the World Eskimo Indian Olympics. He excels in an event called the Ear Pull. It is an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. What? Anyway, he shoots at us with a heavy machine gun and sneak defeats him. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with ear pulling, but it's like five minutes of this guy <laughs> monologuing about this random Olympic sport, which I still don't even know if he's real or not. I... Um, but yeah. I... <laughs> See... This isn't even... I'm starting to get, like... <laughs> inundated, not by, like, any, like, convoluted lore as of yet. Like, the no. lore so far is streamlined. Just that the characters are so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where a lot of the fun comes from. We are not in convoluted tor- lore territory yet. Um, so, we beat him, right? Uh, but before he dies... Um, he he has something to tell us, or before he's defeated, right? It passes out. Um, earlier, when we saw DARPA chief Donald Anderson have a heart attack in his cell, that was not actually Anderson. It was one of the Foxhound members, who you may remember, Decoy Octopus. Decoy Octopus actually oh, died. because he decoy. Yes, yes, I he was wearing it. his face. Um, so Donald you Anderson... wearing his face? Did he skin him? Um, y- y- yeah. Uh, sort of. <laughs> um, so he's got like I don't remember exactly how so it works. Anderson is still dead. Uh, so yeah, Don, Don Anderson is still dead. Uh, basically, it's like you, you need to like take his their blood or something, and then it's like by by and then he uses it to like form this hologram or so. I forget okay, how it works. So it went from right? somewhat mostly grounded mm. like military fiction into just full sci-fi. Oh, bro, we're getting full, we're full just sci-fi. Full very sci-fi soon. at yeah. this point. There's a sidekick guy with a gas mask well, on. Like, yes, I. We haven't gotten there. Yeah, sorry. Yet. This is our jump. I would argue. If mechs weren't your jump, this is your jump. Like, mechs, they're realistic enough that I can still consider that somewhat grounded, mm. like, military fiction. Because, let's be real, the military fucking has... Or it would have mechs yeah, yeah, if yeah. they were, you know, remotely effective against fucking anything. Yeah. Like, I, even a single soldier with a yeah, fucking... Like, why, why give a tank legs when a tank could just have treads? Exactly. Like, yeah. Um, But he's not gonna can trip it with a bigger mech. Yeah. Um, so... Finding Otacon, Snake encounters Deep Throat once again. The two spar in hand-to-hand combat before Snake bests him, and it's revealed that Deep Throat is actually Grey Fox. He was rescued from Zanzibar land and was transformed into a cybernetic ninja after the events of Metal Gear 2. And I'm assuming he's just going to be important through the series. Unfortunately, before he could do much else, he short circuits and is knocked out. Um, however, anyway, Snake and Otacon then meet, um, and Otacon promises to help Snake. Those PS1 graphics. Those PS1 graphics. Um, and it's like one of my Japanese anime. <laughs> yeah, so he, he, well, there's a moment when, when he introduces himself to Snake. He, I did, I did, yeah. I didn't realize that this was where that meme came from. Yeah. He also introduced oh, himself no. as, I'm Otacon, I'm an anime otaku. <laughs> That's how oh, he introduces himself. He clearly didn't have the power of God and anime on his side. <laughs> no. Um, but he's great. So yeah, this is him. Um, it's me. It's it's me. I should have made you all con. You're absolutely right. I. It's not too late to change it. You still have the power. No, I like you as a gas mask. Like this- <laughs> <laughs> Although it would, it would make more sense because I'm, I'm Snake. Anyway, so... Snake and Otacon meet. Uh, Otacon promises to help Snake destroy Metal Gear Rex. It turns out he thought he was creating an anti-nuclear defense system, which was then bastardized by the baddies into a new Metal Gear. Um, he's a, he thought it was like something that would shoot down nukes, but in fact it's being repurposed to shoot nukes. It shoots right? down nukes with... Nukes. nukes. <laughs> see, see, like... I'm sorry, because all they're fucking doing is shoving a rocket launcher on this, and they're like, it's a special weapon! It's like, you are... Like, sure, the mech, that's cool. But, like, why does this need to be on a mech if it's going to, like, shoot down things? Just keep it on the ground? Honestly. Where it can aim properly? The active threat of any Metal Gear is only important in one game. For the rest of them, they are regularly just a thing we need to destroy. Then and you don't need to worry about series, it. Why is the series not named, like, Fox Hound or something? Because it's fucking cool, Metal Gear Solid. I mean, it's a great I, name. I agree. 
But then make the Metal Gears cool. The Metal Gears are the stupidest no, part of the series. The, 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 the Metal Gears are there so that the player has an excuse to get into a boss fight with a mech. That's why, for in every game. Every game you're going to have a boss, almost every game you're going to have a boss fight with a mech. Um, oh, I also find them to actually be the least interesting parts of the entire franchise. So don't don't overthink. Them. I agree. Yeah. They are the worst yeah. parts so far. Um, so yeah, so they're there. So yeah, uh, Otacon a snake, buddy up, right? Otacon's a good guy. Uh, he's a total coward, but he's a really really good guy deep down. The next step is to reunite with Meryl, who's back undercover, wearing a full enemy soldier's outfit, balaclava, and all. So nice. Snake needs to sneak to a lower level and figure out which guard is Meryl. The player does this by figuring out which guard wiggles their bum like she does. God, t- fucking... Yep. Could you... Uh, <laughs> with there, the are some, <laughs> there are some parts of this game that it's like, fuck, you can tell this was made, made. in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah, Meryl is highly sexualized. Honestly, every female character is kind of highly sexualized. Uh-huh. You just kind of embrace it. Um, Kojima is growing as a writer. I mean, um, fair. he is also five years behind everybody else. Fair. So you're like, I see you're trying. And it's, it, it, honestly, it's fuck. I don't give a fuck. It's fucking good fun. I mean, like, it's a general problem in yeah, Japanese like, games. Yeah, it's 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 silly. Like the idea that you, the player, have to walk around and look at these fucking pixels and like these horrible PS1 pixels. And be like, which one is moving a bit more than the others? Uh, um, so yeah, so so we find we find Meryl. All's good, good to go. We we reunite. Uh, they plan to move to the maintenance chamber to destroy Metal Gear Rex, but they are intercepted by Psycho Mantis, master of psychic abilities. Psychomantis taunts the player by reading our mind. You like Castlevania? So he reads our mind. In other words, he reads the player's memory card. Where, <laughs> yeah, where he comments on the games that you have played, specifically if they're Konami ones, like Castlevania. Oh um, my god. Yeah. There, that's actually genius. It's, it's so clever. This whole section that's is fucking insane. That's so cool. Um, so there's like, and it's not even like he just says one thing. There's like, he's programmed to say like 30 different things. And it's like, you love Konami games, don't you? I see you play six of them. And you're like, I fucking do so, Commanders. What the fuck? It's, it's, it's good shit. It's good shit. I... Yeah. That reminds me of fucking uh, Monica and Doki Doki, where she like reads your fucking name from yeah. the computer. Yeah. And it's yeah. like if you named your character like an actual character, and she's like, hi. And her player name was like, oh, what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I love games like that. Um, so yeah, so he does that. Um, he comments uh, on some of the games we played. He then moves our controller with our with his mind. He makes it vibrate. You put it on the floor and it goes... Doo, and you're like, yeah, okay, fine. Um, Snake cannot shoot Psycho Mantis because he keeps predicting where we're going to attack. So in order to defeat him, the player needs to unplug their controller and plug it into the second port so he can't predict our movements. It's good <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's really good shit. And he is like, you unplug it. He's like, what? I can't read your mind. And is, you're like, okay, yes. Now, the one thing. Whilst I think that is a very fucking cool mechanic. Yeah. Is there anything that actually gives you any indication that that is what you need to do? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Just in t- typical Metal Gear fashion, if you're struggling with Psychomantis, you'll get a coil call from Naomi Hunter or Roy Campbell. They'll be like, Snake, maybe you should try moving your controller to the other port. And this is after like 20 minutes of like being stuck with him. So yeah. Okay, but yeah. like, is there any way you could have told that without that call? Uh, I would argue you could intuitively understand that he has read your memory card. We are dealing with meta shit. And he is understand. And he also, like, the stuff he says as he floats around, like, I can read your inputs. I can read your buttons. And you're like, hmm, See, okay. But by the same logic, he should be able to read the player two slot as well. Yeah, but he can. He's only so powerful. He's psycho. Oh, he can <laughs> he can read everything but player two. Yeah, pretty much. Um so anyway, so we so we beat him and yeah, fuck you, Psycho Madness, right? Cool uh, fight. Yeah, cool fight, good shit. Uh, Could we move be better. We move further it's PS1, isn't it? Is this is fucking uh, this is great game design. Let so, me judge them against the standards of 2021 game design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we move further deep um, and eventually we meet Sniper Wolf, Sexy Sniper. Uh, she suddenly makes her appearance and shoots Meryl, injuring her. Snake is captured by Revolver Ocelot, who tortures him because he's pissed he got his hand cut off. Um, <laughs> Oce- yeah. That's understandable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a reasonable... I mean, that's fair. That's reasonable. Uh, Ocelot also takes the disc Snake had with all the information on Metal Gear Rex from him. Um, and eventually 
Ultimately, Snake escapes, returns to the Metal Gear Rex entrance. We get back to pretty much here where all, he gets sidetracked, basically, and comes back around after being tortured, um, where the player jumps into a badass sniper battle, a uh, boss fight with Sniper Wolf, uh, and eventually defeats her. With her dying breaths, she reveals that she was one of the war orphans that Big Boss raised. Aww, she was no. one of the children. Um, and she's glad to die with honour like a soldier. Otacon arrives on the scene, has a big old cry over Sniper Wolf's death, claiming he had become infatuated with her while he was a hostage. Famously, he asks Snake, Do you think that love can bloom even on the battlefield? And Snake, <laughs> Snake believes that love can bloom anywhere. What a romantic. Yeah. Uh, a pack, Snake, you legend. A pack of wolves also arrive and howl, and it's really sad, and the player cries too. Because it is. Like, even for PS1, honestly, this is like good death scene shit. It's dead like a mosh. Um, cause yeah. she's, she's really, she, as you fight her as well, she's like teaching you and she's like, maybe you should try doing this snake if you want to best me. And she's like really nice and just like respectable oh. and it's just good shit. Oh, that does um, sound sad. So with most of Foxhound eliminated. Now, on an unrelated, <clears throat> yes. that scope, that's not going to help anything. That's. That's that, a PlayStation 1 sniper rifle. Right? <laughs> yeah, but like, could they not at least have colored the scope a different color from the metal? To show that that is like glass, I don't. I don't think he. I don't think Kojima was thinking about. Also, that. why are her eyes closed and weirdly smudgy? Like, yes, no, I, no, no, no. I that is it... that is one. Eye, oh no, I was gonna say what's one eye closed, the other one's open, but then it's the fringe is covering. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter. She's fucking dead. All right, we're never gonna hear about her again. Sniper <laughs> Wolf. Anyway, so Fox well, Hound, we should. We've we've now beaten all of our bosses. All that's left is Liquid Snake. There's a lot here, so I'm gonna need you to bear with me. Oh no. So first off. Master Miller appears in the codec and tells us that Naomi Hunter is not who she says she is. Wow, I am shocked and amazed I never would have guessed that. Yes, so Naomi Hunter has been lying about her background this whole time. She is most likely a spy. Wow. Right? I, I never would have guessed it. But wait, there's more. Oh. As we learn, uh, Liquid Snake has added something else to his list of demands to Washington. He doesn't just want the remains of Big Wait, Boss anymore. When did he did? Yeah, remember at the very start he was like, give us the remains of Big Boss in 24 hours. Yeah, what's new? Nuke. So he now wants to add the vaccine to something called COVID-19. Fox die. You will learn what that is shortly. Fox, wait, die, D-I-E, or D-Y-E? No, D-I-E, as in you are going to die. <laughs> so it exclusively kills Fox Hound Team? But wait, there's more. Uh, Liquid <laughs> sure. fully intends to transform Shadow Moses into Outer Heaven 2.0, so, a nation of soldiers who didn't uh, don't answer to a particular country. Well, again, the ethics of that. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like he's necessarily a bad guy. None of these demands feel particularly, like, evil. It's really, yeah. Like, this feels like, I want my big boss's uh, yeah. remains so we can give him a nice funeral. I want to not die, give us some okay, medicine. You're assuming that he wants the remains to give him a nice funeral. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I okay. have, as of right now, I have no reason to doubt anything That's else. fair. No, but yeah, absolutely. Um, these, these demands seem pretty... I want some medicine, <laughs> and I want to be unbehoven to a country, which who doesn't? Now, whether you want that to then be so we can shoot people up, that's where your ethics get involved. But, you know, not being behoven to a country, that's pretty great. I'd love that. Open the borders. Fuck but it. But wait, there's more. Okay. Um, it turns out that Naomi Hunter was a spy for Evil Foxhound, Liquid's team. Uh -huh. uh, she joined up to get revenge against Snake after he killed Grey Fox in Metal Gear 2 because he was her brother. Right? Oh, wait, but she, However, she, he's ah, still but alive. He's st ah, exactly, he's still alive. Back when she injected... Na well, this, alive. <laughs> this is important, this bit. Back when she injected nanomachines in Snake at the start of the game to make him strong, she was actually injecting something called Fox Dye into him. Okay. So Fox which I'm Dye, assuming is what everybody else had, that Snake's going to have a heart attack. So Fox Dye is a pathogen which can be programmed to kill specific people when it comes into contact with them. The targets were Anderson and Baker, the two uh, guys that got, had heart attacks. Yeah. Um, she was trying to sabotage the mission, basically. Uh, Fox Dye has also been programmed to kill Snake, but now that she knows his side of the story and that Grey Fox is alive, she feels bad and is able to slow down the virus. It will still kill him eventually, but when this will happen is currently unknown. Wait, but isn't it nanobots? Uh-huh. Can she not program them? 
she that, she programmed them, but she the nanobots of like she can only program them so much. So she's like, I can stop it from killing you like that's, today. That's yeah, not yeah. how computers work. Yeah. You can't yeah. just program them so much. So that is never explained past that point. So just embrace the snake now yeah, has no. this virus in him, this programmable virus, which can like... give certain people heart attacks and will kill him one day. But but we don't know. Why. My favorite thing is how they always get so close to being like I would have no complaint. Like if this wasn't nanobots, mm-hmm. if this was like just a biological pathogen, I would have zero complaints. Wait, but how would you program a biological biological pathogen after it's been put into somebody? You can. You say whilst your girlfriend works in virology and on pathogens. Yeah, you you can program I, I them. That's can how you make vaccines. Oh, so she can like inject something to change. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You yeah, can, you but, can do that biologically. So. Uh, yeah, so, so basically, Snake has fox die, right? But wait, there's more! It also turns out that Master Miller isn't actually Master Miller. It was Liquid Snake in disguise the I whole time. I never would have guessed that. It's almost like I said he was Wesker. Yes, you said he was Wesker, but the important thing to note, Chase, is that this is not the same Master Miller from Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2. Wait. Master Miller is a real guy. He has been killed off screen. Later, and uh, this isn't part of the lore, We the fans assume that he was assassinated by Revolver Ocelot. That's kind of where what we assume, right? So, and his liquid has been pretending to be Master Miller this whole time. Here's where you're, you've been confusing me, right? Because, uh, so first of all, uh, why do you show me the same fucking image of Miller then in Metal Gear 1 and here? Because it's the best image of him uh, well, then right it's, now. But it's not him, though. Yeah, this is, this matter. is him. Like, so, so this is not Master Miller. He's been liquid the whole time. So, so any time... Grow- so it's actually been liquid giving us facts on Alaska. <laughs> 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 Which makes sense because Liquid is holed out in Alaska, so he'd know all That's about even it. funnier, yeah. but um, wait, so did Liquid grow his hair purely for this disguise? No, Liquid just has long hair. He just likes his hair. So um, he just very so happens to look identical to mm-hmm. Are they related? Or this, is this just weird no, no, coincidence? No, no, that's just a weird coincidence. They are not related. <laughs> sure. Bear in mind that Master Miller famously has sunglasses on every time you see him, even in Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2, so it's like half oh. his face is covered up anyway. Uh, in what world Look, do it's sunglasses two, cover half your face? It's two blonde men speaking over a codec, all right? And you've seen the codec. It's not exactly very, you know, that... Yeah, so so basically, that's the, the stitch. It turns out that Liquid wanted Snake to come to Shadow Moses. This has all been one big setup. So this is another fucking big boss saying, come kill me. So he could face him himself. He wants, he wants, Rivet, he wants to kill Snake for a particular reason. We don't know why. For... Killing big boss? Question. In the maintenance hangar, with Metal Gear Rex powered up and ready to go, Liquid takes off his shirt and explains everything <laughs> to Snake. <laughs> Specifically, the Liquid Snake Can... is the brother of Solid Snake. I d- didn't I say that earlier? Yeah, you also called it. But I'm also well aware that you have watched Metal Gear Awesome, and I think half of this has spoiled this in, in I didn't actually territory. remember that. I just felt like after the whole You're My Brother reveal, yeah. which of course again means that fucking Big Boss is his dad, mm-hmm. which I also guessed. Yes. Yeah. Big Boss was not their biological father. Oh. They were orphans of war who were biologically engineered to have the same genetic code as Big Boss under a program called Les Enfants Terribles. I'm starting to uh, sense a theme in the games you like mm-hmm. with bioengineering. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Snake got Solid Snake got all of the good genes, uh, the badass soldier genes, and Liquid got all the shit genes. How do, how does that work? I don't know. That's how literally does, the further far. As far is as it the just a roulette? Is. Um, no, 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 this is explained. Uh, Liquid got the triple seven? No, uh, Liquid was like the first test subject. They like, and then they perfected it while, while experimenting with him and then managed to get all the good genes and put it into Snake. So Liquid is like the, the, the first, uh, first try and Snake is what came after it. I mean, that makes sense. Can you not like fix Liquid after the fact then? Well, no, they don't give a fuck. They're fucking, it's Big Boss and cool, right? It's, it's shite. So, yeah, so that's the situation. Um, so what, does he want Big Boss so he can, like... No, no, so, so Liquid has hated Snake for years because... Torture his corpse. You'll find out. So so Liquid is basically like, you know, fuck you, Snake, you're a prick. Um, You've got all the good genes, I've got all the bad genes, and I resent you for it. And I'm going to take you out to prove that I'm better than you and that genetics do not matter. Right? So this is a na- nature versus nurture theme. That's what we're going for here. Right, I'm not. Good. I'm on the villain side in so many of these games so oh, far. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Kojima with, makes empathetic villains. Out with like the 
I want to make a military state. Not on, not on that part, but on everything else they stand for. I'm kind of on their side. Yeah, but you don't necessarily want them to kill Snake. Snake's well, just like a guy. I'm, he's just a soldier. Yeah, just Snake, doing his thing. Yeah, don't kill pretty boy. But like, he's pretty... Oh my god. he's yep. He looks like fucking Dio. It's fucking Dio. Dio? From JoJo. <laughs> I'll show you later. Yeah, I haven't watched enough JoJo to, to immediately... But <laughs> it's yeah, no, fucking absolutely. Dio! <laughs> yeah, li- 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 Liquid Snake is as as anime, as honestly, as the sh- as the game franchise ever gets. And Well, actually, no, I take that back. I completely take that back and I change it. I'm going to have to Google here if if there's any like Liquid Snake Dio like, crossover fan arts. So Liquid Snake wants to create Outer Heaven 2.0. Destroy Snake to prove, I'm burping now because I've drank so much beer, sorry guys, to prove that even though he has all of the crap genes, um, he is still a better soldier than Big Boss or Solid Snake. Liquid hops into Metal Gear Rex and a boss fight occurs and it soon well, turns sour. Okay, so I'll give, that one looks considerably more threatening than the ones from the prior game. Oh, absolutely, yeah, this is the bi- the bigger, badder version. Yeah, it's this stronger, also, it's more impenetrable. Again, I only know of this specific one mm. because of the fucking Smash Bros. stage. Yeah, this is, um, this is, no, um, is it? Yeah, it's in the Smash Bros. stage. I thought this was, it was another Metal Gear that appeared. It doesn't matter. No, yeah, it's no, you're this right. one. I think it's Rex. Um, so yeah, so, so, but the, the, the boss fight turns sour, basically, right? Liquid has the upper hand. Until Grey Fox finally appears and uses his ninja moves to deal significant damage to Rex. Aw, oh, legend. Before he can land the killing blow, however, Liquid uses Rex to crush him, finally killing Grey Fox once and for all. We will never see Grey Fox again. That's him, he's dead. Aw. Yeah. God, rest in peace. Uh, However, thanks to the ninja's efforts in weakening it, Snake is able to destroy Rex. However, the explosion knocks him out. When he comes to, he finds himself topless on a platform. With, <laughs> with why me- is everyone shirtless? It's a liquid just loves undressing. Is this both. a Yakuza game? So with Meryl's comatose body lying nearby, rather than just kill him, is Liquid pulled shirtless? him up here, gave him time to recuperate, so that both men could finally duke it out in a topless battle of pure man strength. Snake finally defeats. So liquid. it is a Yakuza game. Pretty much, yeah. This is about as Yakuza as this ever gets. And I've only played half of Yakuza Zero. Not even half, I, of well, course. We'll fix um, that, but... Snake finally defeats Liquid, awakens Meryl, and the two race out of his shadow Moses via Jeep as the facility explodes around them. Uh, out in the cold Alaskan snow, Snake and Meryl take a breather. But oh no! A gun cocks behind them! It's Liquid! Oh, he's still alive! He's not oh, dead after all! No. He prepares to shoot Snake. He's mad, he's frothing, he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Uh, but before he can, the fox die finally triggers inside of him, and he has has a heart attack, dying once and for all. Snake or liquid? Liquid. Wait, why did liquid have fox die? Because remember, it was targeted to to kill people. So now it was like, you're going to kill the hostages, but I will also let you kill all the foxhound because I don't like liquid very much. Wait, 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 wait. But, 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 but when did Naomi put... Fox die into liquid. Right, so yeah, that, yeah, that again, never fully explained. The idea basically is that it's not that she needs access to the people to kill, she just somehow is able to program it to Wait, kill you. So people. she had to inject it into solid snake. Yeah. But she did also, on another side, mm-hmm. when was he did he start getting named Solid Snake? Solid wasn't in his name before, right? Or am I just, it's just getting co- too drunk? Code name Solid Snake. But it's just his name. I'm God, he was Snake before, in this I, game he's now Solid Snake. I don't want to start ranting about this like I did the fucking, like, <laughs> viruses from Resi. Don't worry too much about the viruses. Fucking <laughs> games need to stop making viruses because they never make sense. Snake and Meryl ride off into the sunset on a snowmobile and we roll the credits. I End of Metal Gear Solid 1. Love that. Yeah. Did Meryl do anything useful? Uh, no. <laughs> she's just about... I um, mean... I... I... She's, she's a rookie in this. So she's, she's alive, so I feel like she'll become useful. The idea is that she'll Meryl has has, gro- has learned a lot through working with Solid Snake, and she has grown as a soldier through her experience. And she hopefully won't be dead in the next game. Yeah. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Kind Kyle of scared. Second. This is the one that I've been scared off of the most. This is... This is yeah, Metal Gear Solid 2 is one big, I've written, Metal Gear Solid 2 is one big massive mindfuck, so we are going to take this slow. It is by far the most complicated game in the series. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm starting to feel drunk mm-hmm. when we get to Metal mm-hmm. Gear Solid 2. This is perfect If timing. you can understand Metal Gear Solid 2, the rest of this is going to be a cakewalk, alright? So nice. we pick up two years after Metal Gear Solid 1. A lot has happened. First off, Revolver Ocelot, who's out in the wild somewhere, has leaked all of the information he stole from Solid Snake while torturing him 
on Metal Gear Rex. This means that everybody knows the US government has secretly been building nukes when nobody is supposed to have any. As a result, the US president at the time, George Sears, has been removed from office and replaced with a new guy, Good guy president, James Johnson. James Johnson, legit, good guy, right? God, dude, that fucking name, yeah. though, that is the most generic American name yeah. you could ever come up with. James Johnson, not that important, but just know he's a, he's a good guy president, right? Uh, because everyone and their mother now has access to Metal Gear Rex's blueprints, terrorist organizations have started working on their own prototype Metal Gears. Solid Snake and his new... <laughs> <laughs> and it good. I was... I... I literally typed into Google Solid Snake BFF Otacon, right? Oh, and this is what no. came up. I want these pins. Oh no. Um Oh, I'm immediately just Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Prepare for the shipping. Um oh, because yeah. I already shipped that this is I've seen this and this is just an instant if you don't get that slide transition perfect on the video, this is never this is gonna make <laughs> sense, but oh my god, I love so, Solid oh! Snake and his new BFF Otacon have formed their own two-man task force. So, Snake is like, fuck you, Roy. I can't believe you were making nukes under my, my thing. I'm leaving Foxhound. This is all bullshit. So, this is going down near, like, a Bond route. Mm. Is he now the Q, question mark? The, the guy who makes, like... The... He's the man in the chair. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the Q. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, he, he makes your tools. So, yeah. So, they have now formed their own two-man task force, and they've called it Philanthropy, where Otacon is Snake's man in the chair, the and Snake name. goes off on missions to take down any Metal Gears which pop up all over the world. Why are... Why all of... The... Were the Metal Gear plans like somehow spread to other nations? Yeah, yeah, Revolver Ocelot stole them in Metal Gear One. He's now released them on the internet, just into the wild. <laughs> F- just he's just a fucking agent of chaos. He doesn't give a shit. Any rando can make a can make a metal. We should make yeah. a metal. Oh my they god, let's make prints. a Patreon special. Al- Al- <laughs> Monty and Chase make a Metal Gear. Monty and Chase make a Metal Gear. No. <laughs> um. So Metal Gear Solid Two opens with Snake breaking onto an oil tanker, where he learns that a group of rogue marines has started developing something called Metal Gear Ray, which is basically Metal Gear Rex, but most importantly of all, it can Does fly. It, swim? it can yeah, it can fly, it can operate underwater, it can operate above water, it can op- operate on land. This thing is fucking terrifying. This it's is the most scary Metal Gear of the one, game. One, it somehow looks very aquatic. Two <clears throat> This might just be me seeing, having seen too much anime fan art in my life. This thing looks like it has the thickest thighs. Like, damn. Oh, yeah. yeah, they thick. Them fucking thick thighs. <laughs> Metal Gear Ray is the most advanced Metal Gear in the entire franchise. So do they just devolve after this? Uh, yeah. Um, well, we'll talk about why later. Oh, oh so, there's an actual lore reason. Uh, not really a lore, there's a reason. Um, so okay. the mission starts pretty tamely. Right, Snake is on the tanker, things are going well, but it isn't long before shit hits the fan. A group of Russian mercenaries have also broken onto the tanker, led by this woman, Olga, like Olga Gerlukovich, and Revolver Ocelot. Ah, oh, the boy's back! Yeah, they're now working together. They succeed in a hostile takeover of the ship. Ocelot is rocking a badass ponytail, and weirdly, <laughs> it seems that he has both of his arms, despite having one of them chopped off he by Great Nathan Fox. Winters. It isn't long before Ocelot betrays Olga. He basically tells her to go fuck herself, and we learn that he has he was never working with her on this mission or working with Liquid in Metal Gear Solid 1. He was working for himself. Ocelot gets ready to climb into Metal Gear okay. Ring yep, and make his escape with his new toy. So he's in the Metal Gear, he's like, fuck his all, I'm, a, I'm fucking peacing out, I've now got it. Um, But that is when Snake makes his move. Stepping out of the shadows, he confronts Ocelot, but the gunslinger's arm seems to start spasming. The one that was chopped off. The robot arm? The very obvious robot arm? Not a robot arm. Oh. And then Ocelot starts speaking in a British accent. God damn... It turns out God damn it. <laughs> that after the Shadow Moses incident, Ocelot transplanted Liquid Snake's arm onto his body to replace what was cut off by Grey Fox. <laughs> and that somehow, as a result, Liquid's ghost can now possess Ocelot's body when it's near Solid Snake. <laughs> And saying that out loud, <laughs> it is as weird as it is in the games. <laughs> I 
I can't even be mad at that. <laughs> this is when the this franchise that's, goes off the deep end. That's hysterical. I can't even be mad at that. That's great. Right? I'm 100% <laughs> here for that. Ocelot can now be possessed by Liquid Snake whenever he's near Solid Snake. Uh, Snake is stunned by this, but before anything else can happen, Ocelot jumps into Metal Gear Ray, boots it up, and as it comes to life, it rips the tanker in half, killing everyone on board, including... Solid Snake. Oh, wait. Wait, he's actually dead? Yes. This is the opening of Metal Gear Solid 2. I don't believe he's not dead. So it's worth noting that when Metal Gear Solid 2 released, everyone was really excited, obviously. And this entire prologue, which is about 30 minutes, was released as a demo. (laughs) Is this just a cutscene? So this is like a mission. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just like you're on, you do your sneaky stuff, and then boom, Ocelot appears. The demo ends pretty much as Ocelot's hand begins to spasm, and then it cuts to black. So it's like, you know, buy the game to learn what's going on. This is how I know, right, that Snake isn't dead. It's because if we have this stupid uh, s- liquid snake arm on Ocelot that was very specifically set up to only activate when it's next to Snake, mm-hmm. you can't. You know, do that, and then just, oh, it only happens once. It's never going to happen again. Um, it's going to happen again. Because so, Snake isn't dead, and Ocelot isn't dead, and therefore Liquid Snake's magic ghost arm isn't dead. They're all alive, and it will come back, and then Liquid Snake comes back, and it's fine. The back of the game's box art advertised that you would be playing as Solid Snake again. Interviews with Hideo Kojima discussed Snake's character, his new adventure, the challenges he's going to go up against. So imagine everyone's dismay when 30 minutes into the game, the actual game, they kill off our hero, and for the rest of the game chase, you're playing as this guy. Raiden. Raiden. Raiden, Raiden his name is. It's Leon Kennedy. Uh, he looks a little bit like Raiden. Yeah, <laughs> it's enough. Leon Kennedy. So his name is <laughs> Raiden. Um, other, his real name is Jack. See, People sometimes call here's him Jack, the thing is, but he's You Raiden. can also try and tell me he's dead too. But I've seen the cover art for MGS5. What if I were to tell you that the guy on the cover of MGS5 isn't Solid Snake? I mean, you're a liar, but... I'm not, let's yeah, cont- but I'm not lying this You're time. a liar, but let's continue. <laughs> so, for now, I'm going to need you to kind of just forget everything that just happened with Ocelot and Liquid being a ghost and all that, all right? <laughs> Even though that's the start of the game, I legitimately need... Let's otherwise, go on with this pretty boy who's actually really ugly. Yeah, so this is Raiden. This is our new main character. And you will be, and I, I, don't, I shit you not, until the credits roll, you play as Raiden. I mean, I'm right? okay with that. Yeah. But in the post-credits, Snake's coming back. No, and he's I not. Guarantee, he's dead. I guarantee he is. So years after the death of Solid Snake, two years. Also, does he have shoelaces on his arms? Look, man, I don't Has know. Has he, like, shoelaced up his arms? It's his fucking suit. And then put a fucking Rolex on top of his, like, spy outfit? So, we are now playing as Raiden. He's in a helicopter. He's on a way to Big Shell. Uh, I don't have it here. <laughs> Big Shell, an oil decontamination facility. An organization known as the Sons of Liberty, our baddies, have taken over the facility, and they've also taken the US President James Johnson hostage. Okay. The Sons of Liberty is made up of a variety of wacky characters, such as Fat Man, the Emperor... God, God damn fucking... <laughs> The Emperor of Explosives. So, now that I think about it, yeah. I have actually heard the memes about how Kojima doesn't know how to fucking name people. Is he on roller skates? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, we also have Fortune, I'm... who has a seemingly supernatural ability to make I'm... bullets miss her. I'm. And we finally have She's... Vamp, a vampire. Um, so we're also... <laughs> fucking damn... <laughs> God, God damn it! God, fucking! I told you you're not allowed. I told you you constantly judge me for the games I play, and this is just hypocrisy. At this point, it is. is. Honestly, I criticize Kingdom Hearts so much, and yet this is worse. It's amazing. I love this franchise. To my death. You think but it's worse, God. but you don't know the story of the Keyblade War. No, I don't want to know about this. Shut up, no. <laughs> I'm moving on. Uh, so we're also told that the leader of the Sons of Liberty is a man who is calling himself Solid Snake. Oh, of course it is. They are asking for $30 billion from the US government, or they're going to blow up Big Shell and kill President Johnson in the process. So, rookie agent Raiden breaks so onto Big they Shell. they want to show... I mean... Mm-hmm. I'm kind of... 
So they want to destroy an oil tanker. Uh, yeah, which is going to like fuck up everything. No, no. So, so I should highlight this facility was designed. So uh, when when Ocelot killed Solid Snake and ran away with Metal Gear Rex, he blew up an oil tanker, and there was a massive oil spill just off the coast of the U.S. Okay, this well, that's facility has been set up to clean up that oil and manage it. Right? Uh, okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, I should have no, explained. I'm that. not on their side anymore. Yeah, I was so they want to side blow this that. up. They want to kill the president. Fuck it all. They just want thirty billion dollars, right? Sure. So rookie agent Ryden breaks onto Big Shell. He's supported by Colonel is, Roy Campbell. Is this just like weirdly coincidentally named Shell? When there is a Shell oil company, um, or I, I actually don't know. I would argue probably. <laughs> okay. Um, but also maybe not because Kojima loves to name things on the nose. Uh, he loves doing that, as we are learning. Vamp the vampire. I would rather it's named after a turtle. Also. Is there a specific reason why this weird bar in the middle looks like a gun? Uh, no. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Or is that coincidental? This is just how your radio looks in MGS2. Okay. Um, so, R- Colonel Roy Campbell, right? Ryden's now working for, for, for good foxhound, US government foxhound. Um, and systems... Oh, so they are still called foxhound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and systems analyst Rosemary, who also happens to be Ryden's girlfriend, Right. So Raiden is nothing like Snake. Where Snake embodies that grim soldier of war with a heart of gold type, Raiden is as anime as you can possibly get. He's kind of childish. He kind of talks like this. I'm, I'm Raiden. Oh, oh, look at me. Oh, I'm doing my flips and I'm doing so my So he's Leon Kennedy. Uh, he's, he's kind of... No. So yeah. he's the Leon Kennedy to fucking what's his name? Rez- no, because Leon Why also... Why am I getting so many weird Rezzy... Yeah resemblances in this series so i understand why you're making the connection um leon is cooler than raiden and uh, the game is very explicit about the fact that raiden thinks he's cool but nobody thinks raiden's cool all right <laughs> raiden's making quips they're bad quips you know it's all that that's and, and great the, the mgs2 got a lot of bat like flack for this people are like i want to fucking play solid snake i want to be the cool guy who flirts with people blah 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 and you're making me play as this bond bad. Yeah, I wanted to be Bond, and literally what I've written here is, imagine you're going to watch a James Bond movie, and suddenly Agent Cody Banks 4 pops up on the screen. Th- that is that is what it's like. And I, I really like Raiden. I think he's fun, I think he goes through some in- an interesting character arc, but that is very much what it is like. It's very jarring. It is very, very jarring. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people are pissed about the bait and switch. Um, Raiden doesn't have any combat experience. He's only been on VR simulations, virtual reality <laughs> simulations. So He's this, a gamer! Legit, so this is his first ever field mission. He's um, a fucking gamer boy! <laughs> but he's also a bit of an underdog, so it's never really bothered me. And this whole thing is just a perfect example of Hideo Kojima being Hideo Kojima, which in my opinion is almost always a good thing. Because I like being fucked with by Kojima. Fuck with me. Go nuts. So Ryan breaks onto the big shell and he hunts for the present. Working his way through the facility, he eventually finds a corridor of just massacred guards. It looks like it's a fucking bloodbath. There's blood everywhere. Um, Blood and bodies. And this is the work of Vamp. Now, quick thing about Vamp. Phil Lamar. Yeah, that's the... So, sorry, you'll see this a lot. This is the voice actor. Ah. Uh, Kojima loves to do this from this point He has such a fucking... Oh, so is, is, is this like, this isn't a credit scene. This is like an image of like in-game when, when you meet it. When characters are introduced, they'll most likely go like, Hello, I am Vamp. And then it'll like flash up and go, Vamp, Phil I Lamar. Mean, it's cute, right? It's, it's, it's a bit of fun. Credit to the actors, I guess. Absolutely. I'm here for it. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm so, here for it. It's important for me to highlight that Vamp, as well as being a vampire, is also a bisexual flamenco dancer. God, fu- yes. He's also Romanian. He's my favorite um, character um, in the game now. It is also um, it through other lore. It's never directly stated in any of the games, but through like books and and podcasts and whatever, right? Um, and interviews, we learn that Vamp is the um, is actually in a sexual relationship with Fortune's father by this point. I love this. Or was, was, sorry, was, because Fortune's father's now dead. But years and years ago, they were in a sexual relationship. This is right? so good. So yeah, so <laughs> vamp, bisexual vampire, right? Flamenco dancing vampire. Um, he's my favorite character. I yeah. love him. Oh, he's great. Yeah, he has super fast reflexes, speed, strength. He drinks the blood of his enemies. Um, <laughs> he and Raiden have a bit of a dance, but no words are traded, and eventually Vamp escapes. Just to check, he is an actual vamp. Like, he's not just, like, a weird, like, guy who thinks no, he's, he's a vampire. Jeez, he, well, he, dr- he fucking drinks blood. He's got super fast reflexes. Well, I mean, yeah, strength. but, it, I mean, there's people in reality who drink blood as well. Mm-hmm. Like, is he an actual? No, va- vamp, vamp has fangs. 
cannot be killed. You shoot him, he comes back to life. Cool. Right? He's as vampirish as you can get. Right? Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, they have a, in the England cutscene, they have a bit of a sparring match, but eventually Vamp's like, you're not worth my time, and fucks off. Um, leaving Raiden and one surviving guard alone together. This is your surviving guard. Do you notice anything? Uh, he looks shockingly like Snake. Yes. Do you see who his voice actor is? S- snake? Yes. So this so is... So it's Snake. Yes. This is... No. This is Iroquois Pliskin. It's not Snake. Let me just uh, try rearranging these yeah, letters yeah, yeah, here. No, it's not. No, you can't. Uh, it's, I it's, don't believe you. I'm it's, 99% sure that you can definitely rearrange those letters to say Solid Snake. Really? Is there a Q in the name Solid Snake? <laughs> Suck will it just, 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 yes. just. So this is, no, this is Inaquai Pliskin. He is voiced by David Hayter. He does sound just like Snake. There is zero chance that you can't rearrange those letters into his actual name. Um, the, there's a Q in there. Okay, that's. Fu- I'm not saying that that goes and an in- R. I'm not saying that goes into Solid Snake, but I am saying that those letters will at some point rearrange into his real name. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you right now that that doesn't happen. I, you've said that three times. Yeah, in this I know. Video, and then you've lied, <laughs> so I don't believe you. Um, so Pliskin is also here to rescue the president and stop the Sons of Liberty. He thinks that Raiden is cute, and I mean that in the most like, all oh, right, settle down, sunshine. Not on it. He thinks he's sexy. Uh, Raiden at boasts that he's done combat simulations like this before, and Pliskin's basically like, did you eye? All right. Um, so Pliskin claims that Snake was a lunatic. So if the Sons of Liberty is... Oh, so- yeah, he's like, Solid Snake was a fucking lunatic. So if the Sons of Liberty is in fact being led by a man calling himself Solid Snake, I wouldn't be surprised if this was that hero of legend. Um, the two go their separate ways. How the fuck was he a lunatic? Well, that's that's just what Pliskin's saying. Like, I'm not gonna lie. The snake seems about as generic of a fucking soldier as they come. No, like, because he dealt with, like, psy- oh, like, like psychics no, 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 and no, shit. No, no, but I mean, like, like, as generic of like, an action movie soldier as you come. Like, he's not very unique yeah, yeah, as yeah, far as would, action movie soldiers come. I would argue that by the time that Solid Snake's story is over, he has gone it's through quite over. a bit. No, like, by the time he dies... He's, he's gone through quite a bit in Metal Gear Solid 1. He's had a big boss as his dad. Big bo- Everybody knew across the globe knew who Big Boss was. This guy was fucking famous. It turns out you're his fucking son. Oh, but you're actually a genetically engineered clone. You fight psychics. Like, I get that the character himself is presented as just like a bit of a standard soldier thrown into a wacky environment. But Snake was always just a bit of a... A, a bit of a loose cannon, almost. Like, the way he would speak to people. But, so... Um, the two go their separate ways eventually, right? And as Raiden explores deeper and deeper, he deactivates a bunch of bombs, he battles Fat Man, and eventually comes face-to-face <laughs> on with... His fucking roller skates. On his roller skates. And eventually he comes face-to-face with a cyborg ninja who looks a lot like Grey Fox. So it's Grey Fox. Now, I know what you're thinking. It is not Grey Fox. I don't... I <laughs> do not believe no, you. No, no, no. I'm telling you straight up, this is not Grey Fox. Grey Fox is dead. So who is this ninja? It's for now, Grey Fox. Mm-hmm. For now, their identity doesn't matter. What is important is what we learn here. So, not Grey Fox tells us that the big shell is one big ruse. It was not built for decontaminating oil. It was actually built to house Metal Gear Ray which is currently sitting dormant in a hangar down below. So if Metal Gear Ray is here, it's been two years, presumably Ocelot is kicking about as well. Because he took Metal Gear Ray at the end of the prologue. The Sons of Liberty don't care if the government pays their $30 billion ransom, they're going to launch a nuke over Manhattan anyway. Oh, which will shit. set, yeah, this is going to set off an EMP charge, which will basically, and this is their end goal, turn off the internet. That is their goal. I... Does that make sense? Uh, d- <clears throat> fuck. Don't ask me how. I have no answers for you. How d- a nuke will so, off the internet. One. One. Nukes don't do that. Yeah, I know. Two. <laughs> just say they want to blow up New York and destabilize the economy or something. That's so much believable. Ah. Uh, no. I've done an EMP wave that somehow crossed the entire world to turn off the entire internet. And... That can't ever be turned back on for reasons. There is a reason why they want to turn off the internet. It's because Snake's still alive and they don't want people to know that. I will tell you. Um, So, yes, basically turn off the internet. That's what they want to do. Raiden and the ninja are interrupted with a call from Pliskin, in a quiet Pliskin, um, who who encourages Raiden to come and back him up. (laughs) And once Raiden does, he spies from a distance 
Revolver Ocelot, and a man in a long flowing coat. Now, Because the ghost of Liquid's back because he's next to Solid Snake, aka Plinkskin. His face is hidden from view for now, but this is clearly the leader of the Sons of Liberty, whoever they are. I haven't shown you a picture of Because he's in a long coat, it's Liquid Snake. I couldn't find a picture of him in the long coat, but it covers their face quite quite dramatically. Um, His face is hidden from view for now. Um, but he and Ocelot are clearly working together, and their ultimate goal, apparently, seems to be to establish Outer Heaven, just like Big Boss wanted, and just like Liquid did afterwards. So once again, we have our villains who want to establish this soldier nation. That's the plan. Suddenly, we hear the voice of Otacon in Pliskin's ear, and Pliskin tells wow. Raiden that he is, in fact... Solid Snake. I'm shocked and <laughs> amazed. Wow, how would I ever have guessed that? On top of this, the leader of the Sons of Liberty is a man who calls himself Solidus Snake. Oh, I did know that he... Is that Big Boss? <laughs> no, he is the third Snake brother and the closest genetic copy to Big Boss. I was about to... That just mm. looks like Big Boss. So I've hatch and all... So uh, currently it's a little bit murky, uh, but if Snake and Raiden were basically, uh, sorry, Snake and Liquid were essentially kids that were turned into copies of Big Boss, it's like he was grown out of a jar, is the idea, uh, right? Is, um, is that why he has weird tubes coming out of him now? Uh, no, weird tubes are, are, that's just his suit that he wears and he attacks okay. and shit, that's just his power suit, basically. Um, the the eye patch he gets Why are they all named the Snake? Uh, just because. Is that just because... Cause okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> um, what are, do we ever learn their actual names? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, so, so, Solid Snake is called David. Um, Liquid Snake is called Eli. After and Solid his Decide fucking voice actor. Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Liquid Snake is called Eli, and Solid. Is, I don't think we ever learn his name. Um, so is <clears throat> now I'm questioning: Is Liquid actually alive, or is he just a weird ghost body forever? No, no. Liquid is dead. Liquid. You said Solid was dead. <clears throat> liquid. No, no. Okay, trust me when I say this. You will never see Liquid Snake like he was in Metal Gear Solid One for the rest of the franchise. I don't the closest, believe a word I, out of your mouth ever. You have not built this trust. I tried to keep the suspense for big moments, but no, you will never. <laughs> liquid Snake is dead, and um, he lives now within the body of Revolver Ocelot. Okay. I really wish that his name wasn't Revolver. O- I wish it was just Ocelot. That would be. A million times you cooler. Just stick with me. <laughs> like, so I hope he gets like a machine gun, so he just stops calling himself a revolver. So Solidus is there. Snake and Raiden have a big fight with Solidus on the deck of Big Shell, um, who eventually jump. We are not. We are barely halfway. Just to give you context. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Solidus then jumps into a jet and eventually forces it to. But then the, the pair eventually force it to crash into an ocean. Big boss fight. But that's not all. Metal Gear Ray is fully functional. It emerges from the water, catches the jet, and vanishes beneath the ocean. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like jets aren't waterproof. Doesn't matter. Solidus is like, gets out of the jet, swims into Metal Gear that's... Ray. That's... Um, no, no. I, that's not how that... That's look, not how things we work. never learn, okay? He just, he catches them, they, they fucked off. They're fine, he's escaped, that's right? That's not how things work. <laughs> so Raiden proceeds with his mission, and eventually finds President Johnson imprisoned in his cell. Wait, what? Did nobody notice the president had been captured? No, we knew this. This was, um, this was his mission all along. They've captured the president. They're going to kill him if they don't get $30 billion. I can't tell if this is the alcohol or the convolution that I'm just forgetting these basic details. Oh, no, yeah. Like, the basic... Again, a typical Metal Gear Solid. You get, given your basic mission at the start, the basic mission has fuck all to do with the story. Okay. But to keep you along the lines, this was his pl- mission all along. To sure. find the president. So he finds him. And it's here that President James Johnson drops a few major bombs on us. Oh. Stick, oh, stick with me. This is, this is when it becomes quite a lot. All right. Um, so Johnson reveals sure. that the United States democratic process is a sham it's staged by an organization. So it's just real. So the Illuminati. Uh, yeah, basically the Illuminati, right? Staged by an organization calling themselves the Patriots who sec- secretly rule fucking all the big countries, right? They work in the background. They, they, they whisper in their ears. So it's the Illuminati. Yeah. They control everything. The economy, what's taught in classrooms, online information, it all. The president and his government are forced to work for the Patriots. The Shadow Moses incident from Metal Gear Solid 1 was actually orchestrated by Solidus Snake. Okay? He got Revolver Ocelot... 
to convince Liquid to build Metal Gear Rex so that Solidus could come in, take it all over at the last minute, and use it against the Patriots. So Solidus wants to destroy the Patriots. So Solidus is a good guy. Um, Solidus is a bad guy. That's the interesting part. With very noble intentions. Uh, yeah, so fuck he's an anti hero. Uh, not even that. He's still a bad guy. You're going to find out what, what, what he wants to do. So, okay. um, so yeah, the Patriots, the Illuminati, essentially, right? Um, but Snake in Metal Gear Solid 1 fucked all that up when he blew Rex to Kingdom Come and killed Liquid Snake. So Solidus had Ocelot leak the information online, like we saw at the start of the game, just to cause a bit of chaos and make the Patriots panic, right? Okay. Furthermore, the Big Shell is a facade to hide a second base called Arsenal Gear. Which lives beneath it in the ocean, but that's that sounds not like all. a place that makes many metal gears. But that's not all. Arsenal Gear is run by an artificial intelligence called GW. The Patriots use George GW. Washington. Well done. Yes, yeah, spot on. Yeah, one hundred percent. Wait, is God fucking? Yeah, I'm sorry, but why is? Why is Kojima so predictable? Uh, I'm impressed that you predicted that because I just took GW as like, it's just like, you know, Gamma Wire or some shit. Like, I don't really take George Well, you're not American, though. Oh, Patriots, though, innit? You're not American, but that's the first thing that comes to mind when it's, I hear GW. To be fair, it's not, it's not like some big massive twist that he's called George Washington. It's really just a neat detail that you learn later. But yeah, well done. Uh, so the Patriots use GW to control all digital information, right? So GW is basically like in control of the fucking internet. Right? Okay, so um, that's why really he wants take, to turn off the internet. That's why he wants to turn off the internet, to shut down GW. So, but wait, that's not all. Johnson, President Johnson explains that Solidus Snake is in fact the ex-president George Sears. Wait, what? Yeah, who got removed from office at the start of the game. Um, and his, <laughs> wait, his whole plan... Wait, excuse me? His whole plan has been to seize control of Arsenal gear and use it to take down the Patriots. Did we ever see a picture of... No, we did not. Also, out of curiosity, right? Like, just a, a, a weird little side thing while I'm looking at Solidus. Yep. Um, how did Big Boss lose his eye? You and find did, out. You find out. By genetics, Solidus not have no, an eye? No, 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 no. Or did he also lose an eye or did he carve it out to be more like Big Boss it's a really good point it's, it's totally fair I haven't highlighted this in the boss fight you have them where he's in the jet when they like shoot the jet and it takes it down he gets glass in his eye this is a picture from later on oh yeah yeah I, sorry that's a really good point okay, I should point okay, that okay, out okay, yeah, okay, he has okay. both his eyes and then he loses an eye during an initial boss fight and then he becomes Big Boss and then he yeah basically looks like Big Boss <laughs> okay um so yeah, so so just as so yeah, basically he wants to take down the Patriots. Fuck the Patriots, bunch of Illuminati, right? The Patriots have an AI want to control digital information. I'm still on his side here. Absolutely, Solidus totally like d totally get his fucking game plan. Um, but that's the gist, right? But wait, that's not all. Just as Raiden is beginning to understand, and he's like, his fucking mind's blown. Um, Johnson is shot and killed. Gamer brain. By revolver ocelot, like from, you know, a fucking a balcony above, boom, dead. Oh, and shit. ocelot leaves. So James, the president, is now dead. Oh, well, uh, shit. Yeah. Raiden then receives a call from Otacom that his stepsister, Emma, Emma, Emma Emmerich, is also on Big Shell, and that she is also among the hostages. Wait, whose sister is this? This is Otacon, uh, anime otaku guy, Snake's best pal. I was about to... She looks... She looks very young here, she's like 19. No, that's not... She looks like generic anime fan. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> is uh, this just an anime family? Fuck out, Emma, basically, right? I don't, I don't like... Otacon is the only member of the Emmerich family that I like. Oh, I already like um, her, though. Nah, fuck her, she's shite. Um, and you're about to find out why. So okay. she's, Emma has been working on a virus which will destroy GW, the artificial intelligence. That seems like a good thing. That is a good thing. Rescuing her, however, in gameplay fucking sucks. It leads to one of the most historically irritating escort missions ever made in video games. Um, and after Ooh. all of the hell you go through to get her to GW, which is what we're doing right now, um, Vamp suddenly appears and just <laughs> kills her anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meaning only half of the virus gets uploaded to GW. So not the full thing, but wait, half a virus. Wait, wait, why does killing her stop that? I can't remember. She's like coding it in or whatever, and then he kills her and she can't code the rest of it. Right? It's some shite, okay? If, if it's halfway in, then clearly it is an upload process? I, I don't remember the exact... I remember it makes sense in the game. Um, That's not but... how viruses work. <laughs> it's fine. So Vamp's like, boom, you're dead. So Vamp's just killed Otacon's stepsister, right? He's fucking pissed. Um, Otacon, Vamp Why then Why shoot her, not like vamp her? 
Um, just you, go and bite her neck or something. So Archon, Snake, and Raiden realize the only way to stop Solidus and destroy GW for good, because they they want to destroy GW as well. Fuck is, George Washington yeah, is to leave Big Shell and descend into Arsenal gear, the base beneath Big Shell, right? Okay. Um, the, the, on pretty much the rest of the game now takes place inside Arsenal gear. Okay, which is filled with metal gears uh, because it is an Arsenal. Of Metal Gears. But just as they're about to leave, the cyborg ninja appears once more, and it refe- reveals itself to be Orga Olga Gorlukovich, who you may remember. Oh! Tenor, if you can if you can tell me where you recognise that uh, name and this character. She was one of the two stupid ones that you told me at the start of this game. Yes, absolutely. At the very start of the game, her and Revolver Ocelot took the tanker and yeah. killed Solid Snake. Yeah, one of the two yeah. stupid ones from the start. Yeah, uh, Revolver Ocelot betrayed her. Yeah. Um, so she is now here as a cyborg ninja. Um, the situation with her... I'm shocked that she's not Greyhound, but maybe she is. No, she's not Grey Fox. Grey I, Fox is dead. I told you, Grey, this is I not Grey Fox. I don't believe you. No, I'm telling you right now, if you're clinging to the fact that Grey Fox will ever appear again, He's you're going to be so disappointed. He's going to eventually. So Snake noticeably stands aside when Olga takes off the mask, right? Uh, and Olga knocks Raiden out. Thank God. Raiden, confused and betrayed, asks Snake why he's doing this, why he's letting her do this. Um, he thought they were on the same side, to which Snake famously replies, Who said we were on the same side? Raiden is then knocked unconscious. Wait, just to check. We've still been playing as Raiden for this whole point, right? We play as Raiden for the, until okay. the credits roll. Cool. Cool, we're cool, Raiden cool. now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will never play as Solid Snake again in this game. Okay, cool, um, cool, cool, that's fine. Reawakening in a torture chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Dick gone swag. Yeah, he is naked, 100% naked. So, oh, um, hot. this is a fucking <laughs> kink chamber right here. So we have Solidus, Let the BDSM Ocelot. BDSM begin. Uh, Raiden um, comes face to face with Solidus and Ocelot in a torture chamber aboard Arsenal Gear. God, Solidus God. reveals that Raiden's parents were murdered in a war zone when he was a child. Raiden didn't remember any of this. And he's another fucking war orphan. Yes. Solidus, a war orphan. Solidus, just like Big Boss used to do, adopted Raiden and raised him as a child soldier, and eventually Raiden was removed from his army and taken to a relief centre. After Solidus and Ocelot leave, Olga then appears and frees Raiden, revealing that she is actually working for the Patriots, as they have kidnapped her daughter Sunny and will only release her if Raiden is able to stop Solidus from launching the nukes. Okay, so this Olga's working for the Patriots. Fucking... Patriots have her daughter. Okay. Yeah, uh, she just knocked him out as cover so that her snake and Arcon can use him as bait to infiltrate Arsenal gear. Sure. Yep. Okay. Cool. I. We also learn that Rosemary, Ryan's girlfriend, is also an agent of the Patriots. Ah! Oh. Uh, she was originally assigned to Ryan to keep an eye on him due to his history with Solidus, but over time, her feelings for but him... But he didn't know that he had a history with Solidus. Exactly. It was just in case Solidus reached out to him one day to be like, look, I'm basically your fucking foster da. Like, you know, come join me. Um... But over time, her feelings for him became very, very real. Raiden feels betrayed, but still loves her. Uh, As you sneak your way through Arsenal gear, but naked, uh, things start to go wrong. (laughs) Do you literally play the rest of this game naked? No. Uh, uh, No, no, you you eventually get some kit. (laughs) Okay. Um, The game starts to glitch out. Uh, Halfway through combat scenarios... (laughs) Is George Washington taking over your PlayStation? Pretty much. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Um, combat scenarios will suddenly glitch out and say things like fishing mailed instead of mission failed and it'll show the mission failed screen with like the death screen and you have to like still be playing during the death screen and stuff it's really really good um, with just yeah so uh, you get odd calls on your codec from Roy Campbell telling you to turn off the game console um, it's it's absolutely nuts classic Kojima fourth wall break really creepy shit too because when Roy Campbell's calling you like his voice is all warped and shit it's, it's really good um, the game basically starts to argue with the ethics of, for I the feel ethics. Like Kojima yes. would write a really good creepypasta. Oh, Kojima made PT. You know what I mean? And he'd write a great creepypasta, but like PT is pretty much as close to creepypasta as we'll get. Um, so the game basically starts to argue for the ethics of controlling information, the safety and security which comes with it. It's it's GW, it's George Washington has hacked the game, basically. 
Reuniting with Snake and Otacon, Raiden and the player are given our clothes and a badass ninja sword. So we are on the same side as... We are on the same side, yes. It was all a ruse just to get them on Arsenal gear. It's being used as bait, right? Uh, so they're all on the same side. Everybody's a goodie. Snake, Otacon, Olga, and Raiden. Um, Wait, Otacon is actually physically here. He's physically here now, yeah. Why? Uh, just to be about, just to help. <laughs> just to help. What the fuck is scrawny anime boy gonna do? Just give a god, he fucking do something. Uh, actually, I don't remember if he's actually here. I can't remember if he's here or if he's just near here. He, look, Otacon's on the team, right? That's all you need okay. to Okay. Um, so you've got your badass ninja sword. And from this point on, the game is not about sneaking. It's about badass sword play. We also learned... Here, <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not sneaking anymore. You're, like, fucking cutting fuckers down with your ninja so sword. So this is the Resi 5? Resi 6? Where you have a sword. Where you suddenly just... It's an action game? Uh, Resi 6. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, yeah. suddenly it's an action the game, The yeah. parallels continue. I mean, we're on Metal Gear Solid 2, so it doesn't really... Oh, well, it's like, realistically I, I Metal Gear Solid... It's realistically a fourth one. So it's getting um, close. Fair. Good point. Good point. Um, so... Yes, so so all of the, all of this happens. Uh, you're, you're fighting with your badass sword. Uh, we also learn that the colonel Roy Campbell, that's been chirping away in Ryan's ear the entire game, is not real. It's actually been GW, the artificial intelligence, and even though oh shit, yeah, this okay. is this has all been him the entire time. Um, and, and he's been pointing his gun at Raiden. It's, it's symbolism. Chase, you say this as it's if like it's a symbolism. joke. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the part, that was the point. I honestly will He's be... holding Raiden hostage with his gun. Legit. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, fuck me. I'm, I'm getting confused now. Right, so... <laughs> You're welcome. So, Colonel Roy Campbell has been GW all along, chirping away in his ear, hacking his codec. Um, and even though Emma's virus didn't destroy it, because only half of it got uploaded... the cr- it's viruses corru- work! It's corrupted the system enough to start to show cracks, which is why he's now glitching out. Okay. Right? So, basically... Okay, everything from this point on is 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 <laughs> it's, it's kind of half explained in the lore, half explained, um, and honestly, it's very convoluted and very murky. Let's piece this together. Let's go. I've read four different explanations of what's going on, which try to get around the plot holes. So take everything I'm about to say with a pinch of salt. Okay, but here we go. After the events of Metal Gear One, Metal Gear Two, and Metal Gear Solid, the Patriots saw what a badass Solid Snake was. In order to prevent another big boss from ever happening again, the Patriots developed the S3 Wait, program. so was Big Boss against the Patriots as well? Big Boss fucking hated the Patriots, okay. as we will learn later, yes. Okay, cool. Um, the Patriots developed the S3 program, the Solid Snake Simulation, to create an army of Solid Snakes to fight on their behalf. <gasps> what? It's why Raiden has been trained up on VR simulations. Oh my All god. All of these, every simulation he has been training in has basically been an adventure that Solid Snake has gone on, right? I swear to god, if you say that we've been Raiden playing the previous three games... In short... A lot of Metal Gear Solid 2 has been one big simulation this whole time. Uh, This is where it gets real murky, right? Whilst most of what's happened on Big Shell has, in fact, happened. You know, Snake is actually here. Solidus is real. Raiden did get tortured, etc. Raiden is on Big Shell. He's running around doing his thing. Parts of the game have actually been fully simulated and set up by the Patriots to what? mimic what happened in Metal Gear Solid 1. What? Yeah. So, so again, this is why you're noticing a lot of similarities, right? So, the, I mean, the setup is very similar. Bunch of terrorists take a facility, got a, a big name US official, you have to rescue him, he's a hostage. You fight wacky and four wacky and weird bosses. Um, the A lot of the, 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 the event, like, there's a section where you have to deactivate the bombs. That's a moment for Metal Gear Solid 1. Like, there's a lot of stuff where you're like, am I just, this is, oh, he's just done Metal Gear Solid 1 again. He has. But it's kind of on purpose. Which parts are simulated and which parts are real, nobody knows. Hell, I don't even think Kojima knows. For example, <laughs> when, when Ryan gets tortured, like the torture scene, despite the fact Ryan's naked, it's very, like, Solid Snake gets tortured by Ocelot. You know, it's, it's all very similar. So it's like, which bits are real, which bits are simulation, Wait, we don't know. So, so, the real question then, how does he does he put on a VR headset, or is the simulation built into his brain in a way that it can seamlessly seem as if it's coming? Because if it's like a headset, 
then the entire game is a simulation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes my brain hurt. Uh, my brain hurt. It's fucking awesome. And I remember it making sense when I was playing it uh, enough. Uh, I remember my brain just fucking melting. People like, like, yeah, cool, okay. But I feel it's, like it's one of those points that just don't think about it too Don't hard. think about it. Yeah, take it with a pinch of salt, but that's the situation. All right? I mean, it's, it's dumb, but sure. So eventually... Raiden confronts Solidus, where our big bastard explains the Solid Snake simulation, and then is basically like, right, now you fight all these Metal Gear rays. I, I didn't just make one, I made a bunch. So you have to fight just waves and waves. An of arsenal them. of gears. Oh my god! Yes, you called it well done. Um, so you have to fight just waves and waves of them until eventually Raiden collapses. Uh, Solidus is really bad at naming. Yep. Or really about? obvious, rather, at naming. Mate, I, I, maybe you're just ahead of the curve, but I remember when he was like, I've made fucking 100 Metal Gears. I was Did like, you, oh my god! Like, the only plot here that I came into this knowing was MGS1 from fucking Metal Gear Awesome yeah. 1. Outside of that, I know nothing about this, and I've predicted every fucking twist. No, you haven't. You have not predicted the simulation. Okay, Because, fair, again, fair. You're even right. Kojima couldn't tell you anything about you're the simulation. You're right, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't predict that one, but... Um, but no, absolutely. Um, so, or the Solid Snake was actually the third secret brother all along. You didn't call that. Okay. Um, so... That's basically the gist, right? You fight all these Metal Gear rays, Ryan collapses. Solidus is about to kill us, but Olga then jumps in out of nowhere and takes the bullet for us. As she's dying, Why? she... To, 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 save, to save our life, because she knows that we're like the goodies and fuck Solidus. He's going to nuke Manhattan. He's going to kill That's, a bunch of people. Y- y- to, to fuck with the Illuminati. Yeah, but he's also going to kill Manhattan. I'm on his side. Great, uh, greater good. Snake, snake, just snake, I, I, I say this honestly. Would you nuke Glasgow? No, to no, I right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. To be very clear to our, our lovely audience here, no, I do not actually uh, want the nuking of any city or any nukes whatsoever. So, But in video game terms... <laughs> I'm kind of on his side. Oh, no, yeah, look, so Solidus's intentions are noble, but his actions are bullshit, is the idea. The guy's a fucking nutcase. Anyway, so yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like if it's the Illuminati, I feel like you need to go a bit nutcase in order to beat them. Like, how else are you going to beat the Illuminati if you don't go a bit nutcase? Okay. <laughs> like, like, if this was the real world, that's one thing that I would never justify it, but in video game logic. Yeah. I'm um, kind of still on his side here. So, so yeah, so she's she's dying. She shouts to Raiden to find and take care of her daughter, Sunny, for her. Remember, the Patriots have captured Sunny. Yes. And Raiden promises. Uh, Solidus, like, snaps her neck or whatever. And that's oh, when Emma's virus rip. gets to the part of the AI which controls all the mass-produced Metal Gear rays. So then they all blow up. Right, fuck. Oh, how very convenient. Yeah, very convenient. And uh, there's only just the original me- Metal Gear Ray left, which wasn't like plugged into the system. Uh, Raiden, again, very convenient. Yeah. Raiden uh, falls unconscious again, and when he awakens, we see Fortune. Uh, remember her? I don't have any pictures of her for you. Who the fuck is uh, Fortune? Remember, remember Fortune? Let me scroll back a tight slightly here. Uh, oh, her. Hello, seagulls. Hi, seagulls. Some seagulls flew by. Uh, yes, Did Fortune. Did she do anything for the rest of the... Nah, I honestly, feel like this is the first time we've seen her. Nah, nah her, her and Vamp, we, we learned that her and Vamp like fancy the fuck out of each other, but also Vamp's like fucked her dad in the past and shit, and it's all very convoluted. Uh, but but the, the big thing about Fortune... Wait, if you so remember, he essentially wants to fuck his stepdaughter? Uh, yeah, well, he, he is fucking his stepdaughter. No, not a stepdaughter. He's not married. It was like a fling. It was like a one-night Gross. stand. So, long story short, remember, remember the gimmick with Fortune is that bullets can't hit her. They miss her. All Have we seen her anywhere else in the game? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She pops up earlier. It honestly wasn't that important. It was just a okay. little, like, look at her. Look at what she can do. And, like, a guy shoots a rocket at her and he, like, goes towards her and then the last minute, like, swerves away. Okay, cool. Right? So Fortune suddenly appears. Um, And Fortune's whole deal is, yeah, like, bullets miss her. People think that she's just insanely lucky. Um, but ultimately turns out that she has like an electromagnet like in her stomach <laughs> or something that makes bullets <laughs> dodge her, oh, right? Sure. Um, okay. We learn that the... What pa- if it's like a plastic bullet? Uh, could probably hit her. Um, but basically we learned that the Patriots put Not that her in her um, as part of like the simulation and to fuck with Raiden and shit. Uh, it, it's all very convoluted, but right? that's but, not in a simulation. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Look, just fucking look. I know, I know. All right, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's, it's all. I I don't. I, feel like I still don't think get Konami it. Konami is really or not Konami. I feel like people think Kojima is really smart, 
And he's really not. No, he is. <laughs> Just <laughs> this is nuts. And it's it's mind-boggling. Uh, he hasn't fully explained this. That's the problem. And we he never has. And it's it's and people have pro- probably sitting screaming at me in the comments, and I get it, guys. I fucking get it. If you understand, I understood when I played it. Looking back at it, I still don't fully understand, right? Mm, I, but, I don't know what's going on, but I'm hearing it third hand. So. Right, so everyone's on this fucking platform now, right? Fortune, Solidus, Snake, Fortune's captured Snake, okay. Raiden, and Ocelot has now appeared as well. Olga's dead on the fucking floor. Rest in um, peace. Snake and Raiden are both in handcuffs. Solidus is all like, God damn, you may have blown up Arsenal gear, but I at least still have like Metal Gear Ray. Uh, I'm going to fucking launch some nukes. And, and that's when Ocelot makes his move. He reveals that he was actually working for himself this whole time, classic Ocelot, uh, wants nothing more to do with Solidus, because he's going to fucking nuke Manhattan. Uh, Fortune tries to shoot him, but he shoots and kills her, pretty sure with a plastic bullet. I I don't really remember, but now you've mentioned it, it rings a bell, right? So I predicted another thing, let's go! Uh, I might be wrong on that. So uh, Basically, Ocelot didn't want to nuke the internet. Uh, He just wants to find the Patriots and kill them. That's Ocelot being Ocelot's whole plan... Way back in Metal Gear Solid 1. So right? again... Yeah, good guy. Just What's sounds it? like a goodie. Yeah, Everybody just sounds like a... Yeah, but again... I feel like we've not met a real villain yet. Mm. The Metal Gear Solid is a series of greys. Um, with some d- very dark shades of grey. Um... He's learned there are just 12 members of the organization out there. Um, so, yeah, there's only 12 patriots out there, right? Uh, and because of the virus, he's been able to download their information, right? He's managed to find out where all the fucking patriots are. Um, he's got, like, this fucking card. Why would they like, put that on the internet? Well, no, it's not, like, on the internet. It's, like, b- embedded in GW for reasons. Um, he jumps into Metal Gear Ray, the last one remaining, and starts to set off with a plan to go and fucking just murder the Patriots. But his hand starts spasming again, and he turns into Liquid. Uh, Liquid I... is fucking raging. Uh, he's, he's like, Solid Snake's right there, kill him first, we'll deal with the Patriots later. Um, but Ocelot manages to regain control at the last minute, and he crashes Metal Gear Ray out of Arsenal gear and starts to head off to I kill feel like Patriots. he should just cut his arm back off. Legit. Um, he doesn't. <laughs> he should, but he definitely doesn't. I mean, he wants two hands, right? Um, Solid Snake thinking Get a robot can... hand! There are fucking mechs in this yeah. world! Uh, Solid Snake, thinking that he can chase an amphibian mech, tries to swim after it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he literally, like, jumps out through the hole and starts, like, swimming after him. Solid Snake's now, like, gone for the rest of the game, right? He's off, he's off fucking chasing down Ocelot. That's... I, um, I love it. <laughs> Arsenal gear continues to explode and go nuts, uh, and we learn that this whole time it's been on a course towards Manhattan because they're planning to nuke Manhattan. Uh, it crashes into New York. Wait, Arsenal Gear has. Mm-hmm. So it's a it, it it's moves. a moving base. Yeah, it's oh, a moving base. Wait, but isn't it attached to the oil? No, tanker? no, it's like it's detached. It was like a base underwater. It's detached itself, and it's almost like a massive fuck off submarine. And it's like now oh. be moving towards Manhattan this whole time. Uh, um, oh, it crashes sure. into New York. That's using, yeah. Uh, crashes into what? Just, a, just, just. I mean, when I say crashes into New York, like it fucking hits the dock, it knocks down a few skyscrapers. It just hey, fucking how do, it knocks down a few skyscrapers. It, it just fucking launches it like into the middle of fucking New York, like it's right there. Now, initially in the game, this was fully explained how this happened, what happened. Um, however, the game released in two thousand and two, so nine eleven had happened. So there was oh. a, yeah, there was a big gratuitous scene of it crashing and skyscrapers crumbling and people screaming and like showing it do that. But instead, what happened was like Ryan like gets knocked out and he wakes up because Kojima was a bit like a bit tasteless. Yeah, um, that's I still that's need them fair. to be here, but I don't really want to show that. Uh, that's so, fair. Yeah. So so basically, yeah. So leaving Ryan and Solidus among the wreckage. So cute big boss fight. And yes, it is what it looks like. It is a big old sword fight. Uh, Solidus is dual wielding. I love it. Um, so yeah, they have swords. They just clash, and there's fucking flips, and it's just really cool. Um, and ultimately, <laughs> so anime. Raiden eventually kills Solidus, and he is actually dead. He will not be returning. I've written that. You can... How many times have you yeah, told but, me that? Yeah, and how many times have I been right? We haven't seen Grey Fox because he's dead, and we haven't seen Solidus anymore because he's dead. All right. But we have seen Big Boss, Liquid. Dead. We have seen Solid. Yeah, okay, I was lying about them. But no, Liquid is dead. So it's we're 50 50. We're 50 50 here. You guys, it's a toss up. Oh, well, what are we going to do? It's a toss up. Um, final bit. As we approach the credits, 
Uh, it's clear that Raiden is psychologically traumatized by what he went through, right? The guy's been through fucking hell and back. Uh, Snake comes to see and check in on him and reveals that the list of the Patriots which Ocelot took was actually bullshit. A bunch of lies, nothing in there. Solid was all of the Patriots the whole time. Snake managed to snatch the real one, which reveals that the Patriots' physical bodies from where? Uh, from the, the GW. Like there was a fake one, and Snake managed to find the real one, so he's got it right. But then he's of basically he's found out that all of the Patriots... why have a fake one on GW if you have a real one on GW? It doesn't matter. Trust me, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Basically, what he's learned, most importantly of all, is that all of the Patriots' physical bodies are dead have been for years, and they only exist as AI now. God fucking... Every single one except for one is named after presidents. For example, GW stood for George Washington, which you you, you call... So they're all... So GW was one of the Patriots? Absolutely, yeah. GW is one of the Patriots. Okay, so they're all AIs. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's they're all, yeah. Like, one down, eleven to go. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we've... That, that's And that is where Metal Gear Solid 2 leaves us. Um, suddenly everything goes to shit, basically. I feel like this was lit up as being, like, smart convoluted, and this is just really stupid convoluted. I didn't didn't tell you this was smart convoluted. I think it is very, very clever. Oh, you're so drunk. I I did tell you this is very clever. But I do think it's very clever. I also think it is very convoluted. Um, Welcome to Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 2, Chase, is the welcome to Metal Gear Solid. All right? Um, I'm very excited to continue, but also... This is so dumb. It's so dumb. <laughs> this um, is so dumb. And that is, is where I'm going to leave it. Um, we have now covered Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid 1, and Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, what are your thoughts on the franchise so far? I'm exhausted, but also... It's just dumb convoluted. Yeah. Like, it's not even smart convoluted. Like You say that now, it's going to get smart. I, yeah! Because <laughs> I haven't explained all the explanations yet. Oh god, I I do I want to know them? Oh yeah, because it'll make it less dumb. <laughs> oh god, okay. Um, See, <clears throat> I do love to be very clear, I, I love this because I I live for stupid bullshit convoluted. Like you know this that this is the whole reason that I'm the one doing this series of news because I love my stupid bullshit convoluted series. Yeah. If I was doing it with the Nubis, uh, they would have left after Metal Gear Solid and Psycho Madness appeared. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, this is why I'm doing it with you. I, I, um, I live for this kind of bullshit storytelling, but yeah. fuck. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting because one thing that I think is almost going to recontextualize this is... Kojima... Wait, 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 Thomas Jefferson, TJ. No, 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 no. Uh, we, we never... We only learned the name of one other AI. Wait, so... Wait, 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 wait. So, as far as the series has gone at this point, we have killed one other Patriot. One Patriot, yeah. One Patriot down, 11 to go. For the whole rest of the series. Yeah. Uh, also, so it's interesting because... Kojima said that this was going to be his last Metal Gear game. MGS2. This is where he intended to leave the franchise. He has said this when after Why? Metal Gear Solid 3, he said it after Metal Gear Solid. He really did not want to come back from Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, which it wraps but why up does a he, lot. Why does he keep leaving on cliffhangers? And he really didn't want to come back from Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, so why does he keep leaving it off on cliffhangers? Who knows? Uh, his mentality, I think, has always been... Kojima, Kojima's very, a very respectable developer in a lot of ways, as you will learn when I tell you about the meta towards the end of this, um, that he, as well as creating these sort of stories which are wacky and silly and fun, uh, one of the big things for him has always been that he's very, he's very self-aware of the relationship and the position that he has in the games industry particularly in Konami and he's aware that there is respect given to him because for all the silliness he also developed one of the most famous and profitable franchises of all time. Yeah. He knows the position he is in. So a lot, every single Metal Gear game he makes, he tries to bring in fresh, new talent, teach them everything he knows, get them working with new engines and new technology, think outside the box gameplay-wise. I mean, every game iterates in one way or another. Yeah. Um, so his mentality has always been, eh, I love Metal Gear Solid and it's my baby. And I'd love to be an executive producer on it, but I'd love for one of my younger team to take the franchise and run with it. 
That's always been okay, his, his dream. Okay, yeah. that's... Like, so, happily, so, here you go. So he's, he's, he's not saying, I want this to be the last Metal Gear Solid. He's saying, I want this to be my last Metal Gear Solid. Absolutely. Oh, okay, yeah. that's fair. Uh, that's particularly fair. to hand it on to young, fresh developers so they've got a future in the industry, okay. right? It's that, really always been a shtick. That makes more sense as to why he's leaving a cliffhanger. So that's yeah. fine. Um, Just nobody wants to take it off. No, nobody wants to try and like fix this retcon. Um, it also feels that every time he doesn't know the end game, and I, I think that that's very fair and safe to say. I think the big, as of right now, it feels like the end game couldn't come for like thirty more games. Yeah, is kind of the biggest issue. Is I feel like. The way he set it up, it requires just a behemoth and, like, long game. It's also really important for me to highlight that everything I've described to you has an explanation. Vamp being a vampire, got an explanation. Psychomantis having psychopowers, got, got a fucking explanation. The simulation, got an explanation. I am not going to tell you every single explanation, because otherwise this will be 60 fucking hours long. Well, so, I'll, I'll, I'll make you tell me off video. Yeah, it's it's... Like I will, future games explain things retroactively, and it almost feels like Kojima is very loves to retcon his shit and be like, "Oh no, okay, so actually I said this was one thing, but it actually means this, and that actually makes sense." I mean, I and, love retcons, so yeah. I'm I'm fine with that, <laughs> and I don't mind it because regularly you buy his bullshit with a little bit of sugar, and you go, "Sure, you know what, Kojima." I care enough about these characters. I care enough about this world. I care enough about your wacky doodle bullshit. <laughs> Have fun, and I will. I'm just here along for the fucking ride. And everybody is. Anybody, and I stand by this. Anybody who thinks that they can fucking seriously explain Metal Gear Solid in a, in a fucking dead face poker way is lying to themselves. Um, <laughs> But that's where we're at. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this will be a part one of two. We are not intending to make this a common thing. Please uh, but rescue me. We're two hours 30 deep and uh, we've got at least five games left to go. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.